Nick Abbott. Hello, boys. Hello, boys. Hello, Nick. Where's Ian gone now? Um, probably enjoying the sunny weather. Enjoying himself, eh? Oh, I can remember enjoying myself once. You remember fun, don't you? Um, not recently. No, not really, no. <laughs> Is he really just taking the day off to enjoy himself? Well, it's our first day of summer, isn't it? Uh, apparently, well, would you like me to give you the good news or the bad news? Uh, uh, before you answer that question, there is no good news. Oh. So, make your choice. Yeah, the first one. There is no first one. Oh, the latter one, then. The latter one! Well, um, maybe I should get to that uh, in a while. It's, it's about the summer and about spring and about autumn and where they've come this year. Uh-oh. Yeah. What do you mean, where they've come? Uh, just exactly what I just said. You know, where they've come. Are they all in, like, a weird order this year? Is that what they're going to say? In a sense, yes. You could probably work your way around. If you do a cryptic crossword, then you'd have got there already. We had spring. There will be autumn. It's the thing in the middle that's, uh, questionable. Nature is, uh, questioning. So, is this still classed as spring, then, at the moment? Well, I think we're now into autumn. No. Already? Yeah, apparently so. So, when's summer? Summer has been cancelled <laughs> <laughs> due to a lack of interest. Now, apparently we had sp we had spring. You remember spring? It was uh, it was a delight in May. It was that month that was uh, really lovely. Oh, by the way, I met Carol in the uh, in the corridor. I haven't seen her uh, in a good long while. How is she? Um, Carol is fantastic. She had to rush away for uh, an app uh, a long-standing appointment with some booze. Huh. I said to her, I said, Carol, I just was listening to you on the air. You didn't half wish her on, dear. Why don't you shut up? No one cares what you think. <laughs> That's not what I said. No, I didn't say that. No, no wonder she's driven to the booze. Carol, I really love you. And, um, that's pretty much how it went, you know. I know, I listened to her on my way in, and she answered a call, and someone said, all right, Carol, and she went, yeah! Yeah. I thought, that's, that's, that's how a call should be answered <laughs> on the radio. <laughs> all right. You only get that special touch with Carol. I'll try that. Yeah! Today... It is compulsory for everybody to phone in to say happy 21st birthday to Prince Louis of Luxembourg. Oh, no, we've run out of time on that call. How do you think that one went? Well, it was the first call. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Chris, hello. Fish. Is that why he's called the fish guy? Yes. He just says fish. Yes. How does he input up with it? Um... Well, maybe that's why he's taking the day off. <laughs> is he not doing TV? I thought he was big TV, um, he's... Has he not left the backwaters of radio behind to, you know, further his bank account in television? Is he not doing more TV? I don't... I don't know. He, well, he's back on... Men he's back on next week, so... Yeah, but he often takes little days off here and there, doesn't he, to go and do... Mm. Bask in the sun. Bask in the sky. Hello? Sammy the seahorse. Is he related to the fish guy? Um, I would say yes. Right. On that one, yeah. It was better when we weren't taking calls, don't yeah. you think? Yeah. Yeah, me too. What do you remember from your schoolboy, uh, language lessons? Which, uh, language did you take? Let me guess. French. Correct. How did you know that? Because everyone takes French. Well, it's compulsory, isn't you it? You have to get past French to get to German, or Urdu, or, you know, wherever, it, wherever else comes next. Which is the easier one, French or German? I would say that French is much easier because they've only got, um, uh, three words for the. Just, just the three? Yeah. Hmm. In my school you had to do both up until a certain point and then they made you choose. For the last two years, I couldn't take German seriously after they taught us what uh, the it drives up the street is in German. What's that? Well, I can't say it. Oh. In <laughs> English, it had us convulsed with laughter. In uh, German, of course, they take it very seriously. I also was uh, made to do Welsh as well. Really? Yeah. It was compulsory up until GCSE, what? and then, then so, you could... so that you could watch S4C. That's or what the they one. Call it. Yeah. Really? 
But nobody what? watches S4C. I mean, I did a show in Wales for a little while. In fact, uh, for about a year there, I was doing a show in uh, Wales and Yorkshire and Scotland all at the same time. Really? Yeah. And um, I, I put this out to my uh, colleagues in Wales. Being half Welsh, which I had to underline in purple every time I s said anything about the Welsh, I'm half Welsh, I said, uh, loudly and uh, well, proudly. Yeah, I suppose so. Huh. And uh, not one single person actually said that they like to watch S4C, or indeed any programme in Welsh. The thing is, you don't even need Welsh to watch S4C because it's all in subtitles. You can just... You know, just get anyone can watch it if you can pick it up on. I don't know even if you can pick it up in England or not. <laughs> I don't know why I asked you about your uh, childhood um, extra language classes. You can barely express yourself in English. I am not doing a very good job myself this evening so far, eh? Here's one in Chelsea. Hello, Basil. Hello, Hello ba Nick. Basil. How are you? I'm all right. I was listening to a podcast, one of your old shows. You probably won't remember, but it was uh, you were talking about have you ever met uh, anyone famous? Bumped into in the streets. Oh yeah. And um, I, I never spoke to him, but a long time ago I used to see David Bowie around when I was at school. David Bowie. Yeah, that's it. And then in back in the early seventies, when you was, had your spiky red hair, and you used to wander around in um, Beckenham. But we went round to his in Beckenham. Beckenham, yeah, in Kent. Why? He had a house there. I was, oh, right, that'll be it then. He still lives there. Um, Wandering um, around, smoking a fag, probably. Go to a pub called the Three Tons. Anyway, I went to, um, it, we scarred off school once and went round to, we, we knew where he lived, went round to his house. Um, uh, we, he had one of them letter boxes that were right down on the ground, you know, just a few inches off the ground. You could put your hand in and you could pinch his letters. And we, <laughs> we, we grabbed a couple of letters. And the one that was obviously, several of them were for fans. And we, we had this one from a, a girl fan. And she said uh, she'd really like to meet him and everything else. So we, we wrote back to her saying that we'd, he'd be round um, for tea Sunday afternoon at three o'clock. And uh, I still feel guilty about it. Yeah, you're a very bad boy, Basil. But thanks for coming clean. All right. Okay. Cheers, mate. Ta-ta. How on earth did fans get to, to uh, find out where David Bowie lived? I think his whole story is beginning to fall apart. Are we believing it? Hands up in there. Who's believing it? Anyone at all? No. What's I mean, the story? Uh, fans, were you oh. listening to this show? Oh, no. Pay attention. Good grief, boy. He's still trying to remember his childhood friends because you know I'm, I'll be quizzing him about it later. Oh. I want four trees in, in French, French. <laughs> by the end of the programme. Is that clear? No. <laughs> I remember, uh, you must my... construct perfect sentences as well. I remember calling my German teacher Frau Martin, even though he was a bloke, and I thought that was hilarious until the, the day he pinned me against the wall <laughs> told me to stop doing it. Yeah. I could have taken him to court human rights these well, days. Well, not then. That. These days, yes. Then, it, you were deserving of a clip around the ear. Yeah. Good mm. thing, too. And it's, and, uh, you've grown up to be... Well, I'll stop there. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have, uh, Hersham. Hello, David. Yeah, like I said, wasn't it much better when we weren't taking calls? Yeah. I think you'd better start, um, screening these calls. Muswell Hill, hello, Ra Lorraine. Hi. Hi, Lorraine. How are you? Great. You filling in for that lunatic again? Yeah. <laughs> Let, can, can we hear, um, um, Agent Chris speak, speak some Welsh, please? Hear Agent Chris speak Welsh? Do you yeah, know much so Welsh? Like uh, me, I don't. No, not you. I don't understand a word. But yeah, it? well, we're not what asking you to do it, Chris. Do you uh, know much Welsh? I only know the very, very basics. Can you get by? I not thought you barely. Were. Oh, well. No, no. Well, I'm from Wales. That makes me Welsh. But Where about? Uh, Cardiff. Oh, that's barely Welsh. That, that's the capital of <laughs> Wales. <laughs> that speaks some Welsh. It's a um, language. Bu Budada. No, that's not Welsh. Yes, that's it is. Indian, I think. No, it's not. You're rubbish at this. No, you are. It looks like Greek. Yeah, it's all Greek to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, Lorraine. Okay, Cheers, my dear. Ta-da. Can you introduce the travel in Welsh? Um, he's Alan Joyce. You fail at this test. Be prepared for your French exam, which is coming shortly. This is LBC. 
Here's Travel Now with Alan Joyce. Thanks, Abbott. Everything is going extremely well. Well, there was a, a survey, a survey, a, a study which has revealed that people leave primary school just before they go into secondary school, and uh, almost no one at all can read, write, or count. What, English? I think it's one out of five. But I, I think that's just being generous. Yeah. Yeah. In English, yes, that's right. They can't read at the age of eleven. Something like one in five, which, as I say, I think is um, uh, being generous, cannot uh, read, write, or add up at eleven. I can remember the a thing called the eleven plus. Eee! It were gun when I was a lad. We had the eleven plus, which meant that at the age of eleven, you were marked for life as either stupid or super extra double smart. Yeah, it's, a, it's a bit too soon then, isn't it, to no, tell? No, it is not. Isn't it? It's, it's a perfectly adequate time of life to tell. And I was put in one of those two streams. What, so I'll they... leave you to guess which one, considering where... of what I've ended up doing. So they wrote I'm you I'm a off. DJ! Hey! Get to the <laughs> back of the class. Yes, exactly. <laughs> well, no, it's do, uh, quite those... right. Did you have those Chris Richmond tests? You had to you had to draw in a little circle all yeah. the way through. It took ages. What? You had to do what? There were multiple choice. All the questions were multiple choice, and there were pages and pages of them, and you had to fill uh, in a little, like, a, a circle. Yeah, I know those, yeah. Um, but didn't they, like, tell you, um, it kind of worked out what type of career you should be going into? Now, these were, like, oh, right. things for, to put you in the classes ahead in the, in the next year of school. Oh, what right, next no. school you went to? I'm thinking of something else. Yeah, it wasn't at all frightening. A bloke came in and said, I want to ask you a bunch of questions. I want to have them answered immediately. Something like that. Yes. Uh, but at the age of 11, where we used to get tested for the 11 plus, which as I said would, uh, would test your ability, uh, how, how well you read, wrote, and um, added up and divided and subtracted and whatever the other one is. Hmm. Add, subtract, divide, multiply is the right answer. <laughs> the things I've retained since I was 11, it's shocking. Yeah. Um, but at the point that we used to get tested for these things, children these days are unable to even take the test because they can't read it. <laughs> oh, yeah, but... Don't you find that staggering? The thing is, at 11, you can't read... you can't read everything. I mean, what, are they, are they just talking about basic reading, Well, they're not or... giving them Moliere to read. <laughs> no, they're just reading, you know, The Sun or whatever it might be. <laughs> Anyone can read The Sun. Jack and Jill. All oh, right. You remember about Jack and Jill? They went up, up the hill. Did they go out boozing and, uh... Yeah, to fetch a uh, bucket of booze. Yeah. yeah. you're right, yeah. Uh, but, um, so it's hardly surprising that, according to one of the snooze papers today, adults remember, on average, seven words from the languages they studied at school. I find that hard to credit, because whenever I have, uh, been uh, faced with having to come up with French, mm. which admittedly is irregularly, I mean, the last time I was in uh, French France was 15 years ago, something like that. Yeah. But, uh, if you're in Paris, of course, they are very displeased if you start speaking English at them. Oi, garçon, just doesn't cut it in Paris. They'll... That's because they're lazy. Coughing up in your soup. They're lazy. It's because they don't want to learn English. Do you think it would be... Or is it, is it more, um... Is it okay to speak English outside of Paris, then? Is that what you're saying, or is it just... Well, Parisians especially are like New Yorkers, and uh, Londoners as well, I would imagine. They're, we're, we're all very busy, we're all very hassled, there's too many of us squeezed all into the uh, one place, and so we would like people to state their business and then get out of our faces. Yeah. And if you can't speak French in Paris... I mean, how would you get by ordering things in French in London. You'd get nowhere. No one would have any idea what you were saying. Not a clue. And yet we expect it when we go abroad. It's the international language. English, don't you know? Well, it, it is. It, French used to be the international language of, um... French people. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh. It used to be the international language of contracts, or international contracts between countries used to be written in French because it was a very precise language. English, on the other hand, can be taken, you know, one way or the other, in much the same way as governments tell us one thing, uh, while ho crossing their fingers <laughs> behind their backs and meaning completely, uh, you know, something else. It's, it's inverse. Yeah. In French, can't get away with that. Very precise. But the thing is, I think people know more than, what, seven words of their 
of the language they studied? Well, this is what it says. Following five years of foreign language classes, we cannot recall basic words such as sorry and good night after we leave school. Only 2% of those polled know how to ask the way to the lavatory in the language that they were meant to have learned. 2%! That's hmm. you don't use it. So. No, but any language, if you don't, you're not using it, you forget it. <laughs> yeah, but you can get by, is, yeah. is my point. When you're stuck in France, and you're not standing up in class, so you're embarrassed to speak in a French accent, you, you're embarrassed to actually do well, because it will mark you out as a swat, yeah. and nobody wants to be seen to be keen. Uh, if you're in France, and no one will uh, laugh because you're trying, they'll laugh because you sound ridiculous <laughs> yep. to them. I mean, it'll sound like you're th actually strangling the French language. <laughs> but um, you, you, it does all come back to you, I find. Not all of it, not obviously. I mean, you have to point and grunt uh, occasionally. Yeah, but if you, yeah, the thing is, if you say just the, the odd word, you know, they'll pick up what you're saying. Because, I mean, it, you know, when foreigners come over here and, you know, they say an odd English word, you can kind of get what, where they're going. Yeah. Pointing and grunting. Yes. Uh, the scale of ignorance emerged as uh, uh, the BBC surveyed 3,000 adults. Why did they do it? Is it a, for a new TV programme or something? Oh, God. Oh, it's a celebrity quiz. <laughs> Close. A celebrity quiz. Oh, that's what we need another one of. What's a celebrity quiz? Uh, is it? I'll let you have a wild stab in the dark. It's a quiz. Yeah. For so and featuring celebrities. celebrities. Uh, the majority of us are unable to use the language in adulthood and struggle to remember the simplest of phrases. Um, I've uh, mentioned this on the air, but <coughs> when I went to Nice last, you know what Nice is? Nice. Yes. I asked for, because I take my MP3 player, in fact, I, s I said this to somebody the other day, either I said it in just to someone or I said it on the air. I think stop you said me, it here. Stop so me if you've heard it before. Yes. Stop. The scart thing. The scart these. Oh, I've said yeah. that before, have I? All right. Well, I'll take this one in uh, Hertfordshire. Hello, Anthony. Hello, Nick. How are you? I'm all right, thanks. How was your day today? It was super. Thanks for asking. I've just, um, uh, I was playing... Rock and roll! ...over at the other place, and I've flown here. My arms are exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> the old ones are the ones we've all just heard before. Your tonight. I have a chilled night. Right, OK. Um, I think, I know where Ian Lee might be. Go on. I think he's at home on his Xbox 360 or PS3. He's at home doing a what? I, I, I bet you he's at home Yeah. Uh, on a PS3 or P Xbox 360 and watching Big Brother. Right. I bet he's just banking off. OK. <laughs> All right, uh, thanks a lot. Show, uh, Cheers, Anthony. Bye. Thanks, mate. Uh, that sounds like... I mean, I, I know you're supposed to relax on your day off, but that sounds like slipping your mind into neutral. Yeah. It is Xbox, PS3, whatever it is. Yeah. Isn't that children's toy? Well, no. I think most adults have got them now, haven't they? No. Oh. I don't know any adult that has one. Not one single one. You should try it. I thought no I was going to say Chris has, but he's not an adult. <laughs> oh. Honestly, you're missing out. You're an out. adult in the, uh, in a court of law. Mm, <laughs> yes. <laughs> But a child in every other respect, and that's why we love you. Oh. And I only say that um, because we're on the air. Off the air, it's a completely different story. Yeah, I know. But um, no, it's a children's toy, isn't it? Well, no, it kind of, uh, it's a skill. It's a sport, I think. Uh, I'll, I'll stop you right there. It is not a sport. It's a pastime. Anything that uh, can be considered like a s skill can be kind of turned into a sport. <laughs> No is the wrong answer. Here's the definition of a sport. <laughs> oh. Or rather, here's the definition of what uh, differentiates a sport from a pastime. If, and I've said this on the air as well, write this down, I'm correct about this, as everything else. If you can play uh, an activity at the highest level mm. while still being fat, right. it's a pastime. Hmm. And you could count that for golf is a pastime, darts is a pastime, poker, which shows up on the sports channel that I um, have stopped um, subscribing to because it's just silly. Poker is on the sports channel. I mean, that's just laughable. I mean, you can play that while fat and drunk. <laughs> what, about, what about snooker? What would you can snooker's a pastime. Of course it is. Really? Well, if you, yeah, but if you were really, really there fat, there is no ifs and buts. Yeah. 
you, you know, you couldn't lean over the table. Exactly. Sure you could. You could just rest your stomach on there first and use it as a cantilever. They might tip up at one end. <laughs> <laughs> surely if you're competing... Very heavy. Yeah, surely if you're competing against another person, though, that makes it a sport, no matter what it is. True. Right, well, you could c compete with pie-eating. Yeah. Yes, yeah, the, the sport of pie-eating. If you're going against someone else and you, you could be the winner, does that make it a sport? Yeah. If, if <laughs> of there's course a, not. If there's a loser, it's a sport. Well, you could say that of all business, then. <laughs> That's what the uh, the square mile is, in, is engaged in. It's not business, they're just sporting activities. Blood sports. Yeah. Uh, of which there are few winners and many losers, and I count myself among them. Hmm. And you two, too. Oh. Really? Yes. <laughs> really. Oh. <laughs> uh, okay, this is LBC. I'm Nick Abbott in for Ian Lee. We're going to go away for the new news, which will be all bad. I bet it will be. Tires. Right, so what are we doing? I just turned on the uh, air conditioning. You know, I was sitting here for the first half an hour and I thought, I'm feeling very sleepy. I mean, I have just done four hours somewhere else, but I can normally, you know, I'm a professional and I can work through it. Of course. But I was thinking, oh, feeling so sleepy. And uh, Carol was sitting in here before, right? She turned the air con off. She probably doesn't like being in a breeze. And um, so there was no actual, there was no oxygen coming into the room for the entire time that she was here. She sucked all the oxygen out of this room. Can you believe that? What, she didn't even leave you a little bit? Not even, uh, not an ounce, no. But then, uh, you know, that's Carol. She'll suck the oxygen out of any room that she goes into. <laughs> she probably thought it was booze. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what were you going to say? I was going to say, so you've been breathing Carol's Carol's recycled air. For yeah, that. exactly. Here is uh, Banstead. Hello, Charlotte. Hello, you're complaining again, aren't you? Moan, moan, you. moan. Yeah, Stop moaning. moaning. I've been listening to, watching the telly, the Battersea, um, the BBC are doing Battersea Dog Time this week, three weeks. Are they? Uh, the, yeah, program on dogs, trying to home dogs and cats. Oh. Yeah, Battersea. Apparently they've got a lot of, um, staffs up there, Staffordshire Bull Terriers. Yeah, good. Yeah, but apparently they've just got a bad name because they're not being trained properly. Uh, well, yeah, it's, so. well, uh, much like, um... <laughs> Yeah. yeah, much like the misbehaviour of children is the responsibility of, is the is the fault of adults. The misbehaviour of dogs is the fault of the people who own them. Yeah, people oh, who go yeah. around with staffs normally have a um, have uh, tattoos going up both arms. They're in yeah. tracksuits. They're, 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 if if at all, then the dog will be on a piece of string. What's the um, one that's actually banned? There is some sort of staff that you can't have, isn't it? I don't know. They're all the same. Yeah. Giant sets of jaws on yeah. legs. Why anybody would want uh, one as a pet is, um, other than to show how hard they are, which is of course why they all buy them, um, is a mystery to me. You might as well have a loaded gun as a pet. Yeah, I, I heard actually Anna Raven uh, a few months ago talking about staffs, and she's always had a staff. And yeah, like I said, it's a great dog and everyone should own really one. They're really good. Yeah. They're really gentle dogs if they're trained properly. Right, well, uh, it's probably scared to death of Anna though. I mean, <laughs> if you... <laughs> I, I, I would be. She could train me like that. It's such a shame, because I think they said they get about 2,000 in a year. Uh, yeah. Dogs. And they'll, uh... I mean, I'm looking for a dog that'll go with my cat. No, that won't go with a cat, will <laughs> For a moment there, I thought you... I thought you were going to say that it would go with your decor. No, with my cat. Right. Oh, I've, I've lost my dog, which she's put to sleep last year. And I'm looking for another dog. So, so what do they do with all the dogs that, that well, the, 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 all the dogs come in the front door and they go out in uh, a much quieter state through the back door, don't they? What what happens to them then? I don't know. I mean, I, as, I, as I said, they, they've got quite a lot of them up there, but they're just not trained properly. People right. are not training them properly. But and why you would want a dog like that in the first place is, uh, I just no, don't I understand. No, I won't, I won't take a dog like that, but I'm just saying that apparently they're just not, they just got the wrong, people are taking them wrong, if you know mm. what I mean. Well, th that kind of dog attracts the wrong people, apart from uh, Anna's dog, which uh, doesn't apply. No, she said she's always <laughs> had staff. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay, thanks a lot, Charlotte. Okay, Cheers, bye. my dear. Ta-ta. Uh, well, that's a surprise, isn't it? The BBC are doing uh, three weeks of uh, a fly-on-the-wall reality programme about pets at the Battersea Dogs Home. I mean, Rolf Harris. Harris. I I really... No, is he, he isn't Rolf? involved in that, is he? Uh, he's, he's always he's involved. The first choice when they go, ah, oh, ah. Oh. 
It'll either be him or that Ben Fogel. It's painful, isn't it? There- are, no one has any ad ideas in, uh, television anymore. And some of them that they're coming up with are actually positively, creepily scary. Like this, uh, children dancing thing, toddlers yeah. dance sex, oh, or whatever they're called um, out on Saturday nights. Babies on ice or something, something like that? Something like that, yeah. It's Absolutely a, frightening. <laughs> I mean- Like, uh, mini pops or whatever yeah. it used to be. Yeah. I mean, that's Freaky. just, uh, a, a scintilla away from those, um, uh, those children's uh, beauty pageants that they have in America, which are properly weird. It is like that, isn't it's it? It's exactly what it is. Is it- is it because the, the- the TV channels are thinking, oh, you know, well, they- because they didn't know it was gonna be, you know, bad weather over the summer, and so they planned their summer schedules and were thinking, oh, most people are gonna be out, it doesn't really matter what we put on. We could put on anything over the summer. Well, that's a ridiculous position to hold. They could put on quality things, they don't even have to put on new things. We don't mind if it's a repeat. Yeah, but- If it's quality. To put on stuff like that, and you know they run out of ideas when they start to do the same show but with different types of, uh, entrant. Like it'll be ordinary, uh, members of the public, and then they'll go the celebrity special edition mm -hmm. route. And now they found, uh, an entirely new seam to mine, which is the the little babies, because then you get the ah, oh, and and pretty sh soon it'll be the pets, pets doing tricks. I bet you <laughs> somebody's thinking of that right now. <laughs> Alex is, <laughs> and whichever pets don't win get put down immediately on the air. Yeah, your phone calls will determine which one wins. <laughs> <laughs> Vote now with your red button. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Bermondsey, hello, Samantha. Hi, Samantha. Hi, I was just phoning about the lady that called before saying she wants to get a dog to go with her cat. Yeah. Right, I've got a staff and a cat in the same house as three children. I don't have any tattoos. <laughs> I've got one little one on my shoulder. So you do have tattoos? Well, one little tiny one of a dolphin that I had done at 15, which doesn't really count. Yeah, it does, it's a tattoo. <laughs> yeah, but no one ever sees it. Why did you get a staff? Well, a Staffordshire really Bull Terrier. It's a fighting yeah. dog, right? No, it's not. She's actually an angel. She really is. I've no, but that's her. the purpose of those dogs, isn't it? Aren't they bred no, to be fighting not. dogs? No, they're not bred to be fighting dogs. They're only bred to be fighting dogs by imbeciles. If you have a family and you want a good dog that's going to look out for you and your children in your home, then you want to get a staff. I've got a staff, a cat, three children, and absolutely no problems whatsoever. She's yeah. as gentle as anything. S and the cat so far, for the dog. and then it'll they'll just take the slightest no. little thing, and then a, a switch will go off, and its little no. brain, yeah, and it'll bite your face off. No, that happens with any dog. Any dog that will happen with. That'll happen with a mongrel. It'll happen with a labrador, a Yorkshire terrier. Any dog yeah, but if a Yorkshire Terrier careful. went berserk, you, you'd be able to r restrain it with one hand tied behind your if back. If a Labrador went berserk, would you be able to restrain that with one hand? Yeah, because it, it would only go berserk to the extent that it would li try to lick you to death. Mm. Well, that's what my dog actually does. He actually tries to lick people to death if they walk through the door. And He's a Staffordshire Bull Terrier will get about... No, s ...about so never, high. That's no, an awful thought. Absolutely. My Staffordshire Bull Terrier comes up to my knee, and that's it. She's five, I'm five foot five, so I'm not tall. Right. You know, she's just a small staff. She's friendly, she's gentle, she does what she's told. When you say bed, she goes to bed. You know, you tell her to sit, she sits. She's been trained properly with love and care. The cat was here first. We got them to know each other. They sleep in the bathroom together. They chase each other up the hallway. The cat actually attacks the dog more than the dog chases the cat. And they're brilliant. Brilliant mm. dogs, love. Uh, they just need a lot of love and attention. They need a lot of attention, that's the thing. Right. And when you take it out for walks, is it on a piece of string? You no, know, it's on a good lead, and, you know, she, she's very good with other dogs. She's very social with other dogs as well. She hasn't eaten many this week? She's never bitten anybody. She's right. never bitten a dog. She's never bitten a cat. She's never bitten a person. Well, was this doing better than I am? She's brilliant. She's good as gold. All right, thanks uh, a lot, Samantha. That's okay. a, a lovely picture of your uh, lovely home life. Cheers, my dear. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Um, aren't dogs like that supposed to have muzzles? I thought that there was some law that came through that all dogs out are, that are capable of biting you in half, like a shark, mm. are supposed to have muzzles. Isn't that the case? Um, all dogs should have their teeth and vocal cords removed. <laughs> That's doesn't correct, it, isn't doesn't it? Doesn't it depend on if they've offended in the past? <laughs> well, we wait until they're guilty before we make a move. Well, everyone's innocent until they're proven guilty, aren't they? What, dogs are people too? Some people think they are. How about, um, Burton on Trent. Hello, Adrian. Hello, uh, Nick. How you doing? I am all right, mate. Yeah, um, I don't know about dogs. 
you ever seen uh, what um, dog wool and collars on it? Makes it like it's come out of a, uh, yeah, it's like about to go into space or something. They look really funny, don't they? <laughs> How do you mean? Like, 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 big, it's like a round, great big thing around its head. It's like when it's used Oh, like it's wearing a bonnet. Yeah, stop it. Um, to stop it to eating itself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, you see them walking out, you know, no matter how miserable you feel, you always... Yeah. Like, <laughs> you can have a chuckle at that, yeah. I'm picturing it in my mind and, uh, laughing internally. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, one of the quick thing before I get what I call it that, um, yeah, well, There's always a list with you. Uh, yeah, I missed the list in a second. <laughs> yeah, you know, the, uh, Tour de France, all this rubbish, you know, Oh, cycling, yes. Mm-hmm. Mommy! Well, the excitement never start. Yeah, all well, the stuff about uh, people says to be taking substances and yeah. stuff like that. Have you heard that um, now they're accusing people of peddling? Oh, these are the jokes, <laughs> folks. <laughs> yeah, I'm on about three cycles a day now, man, but I can handle it. I've just got a numb bum at the moment, that's all. <laughs> I, I know it was rubbish, but, you know, I've had a long day. Yes. So I've got an excuse. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to sound really geek now, but you're talking about games consoles and stuff there. I do have one myself. I, it went off one for years, and then sort of got back into them. Okay, th here, here's the, the final word on games consoles. You are wasting your time. Things you can do on a no, there isn't. You wabble, you waggle your little thumbs, <laughs> and I don't care what's going on on the screen. All you're doing is you're waggling thumbs. I can think of a lot of better uh, ways to uh, enjoy my thumbs than to play a computer game. You, you, but you can't go into that on the no. air. No. <laughs> but you can, you can do stuff in cars and stuff. You can't do on the streets, so. though. You can do stuff in cars. Yeah, you're not car. in a car, Aid. You're in your <laughs> squalid little bed set. <laughs> I don't live in a bed set, but no, you can't, it's, this is, uh, when was the last time you seen one? I bet, that you were still the like, uh... Asteroids. Uh, that was the last time I played a computer game, and that was all I needed to know. You should step into the, what's that, yeah. 25 Yeah, step into the ago. 80s. No, I absolutely will not do that. I refuse. <laughs> I'm a refuse, yeah, Nick. Yeah. Pick up a book, Aid. You're not gonna... You're not going to learn anything at all. You might um, uh, be uh, early qualifier for a fast jet pilot by honing your response time to the, the things that appear on the screen, but that's about it. It will yeah. be of no use to you in your life at all. Okay, Do yeah. a crossword. Oh, well, crossword is so similar to a crossword, though, isn't it? It keeps your mental agility sharp and doing it. Apparently not. <laughs> I thought it was a proven scientific fact. Oh, yeah, it must be, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Aid, um, my mental um, faculties are telling me that I'm past a break. Oh, I was, I was going to talk about but I'll leave that till tomorrow. I literally can wait. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Here's Travel Now with Alan Joyce. Thanks, Nick. Still watching those problems. Are Listening, dear, you can talk to me. Let's have Mr. Lister. Good evening, Nick. Philip. Uh, you were talking about your school days earlier on. Oh, yeah. Well, I pumped into someone today. I hadn't seen them for a while. And we brought memories because we were both in the school play. And I wondered, were you in your school play? Um, no. The only part I've ever played in a play was Blythe Spirit, where oh, I yes. was hidden in a bookshelf, and my job was to release the springs that would launch the books across the room as though, um, uh, sent there by a ghost. It is a ghost story, isn't it, Nick? Yeah. Oh, right. Who wrote it? I was just trying to remember. Uh, so, um, Oscar Wilde. Oscar Wilde, oh yeah. Now the one I was in was Julius Caesar. Uh, Julius Caesar, yes. And I had a fantastic part in it. I was only in the first scene. I had a big part in the first scene. I was a tribune. And uh, I had to wear a toga. Oh, that was fantastic. I enjoyed toga. that. Toga. <laughs> and I had quite a big part in the first scene, and I was never seen again. Oh dear. Which meant that all, all, I could go home, you know, and uh, get changed. Sometimes they wanted me back for the, for the... It was about three or four nights we did it. And uh, so they, they said, come back on the last night for the finale, because we're having a bit of a party, but, uh, you know. A school play? Yeah, we had a stab at Julius Caesar. You had a party? Well, at the end of, you know, end of, end of, uh, end of, uh, run party. Right, in a school play? Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, we... Well, I suppose that's the, uh, the, you know, it's the, it's the, the thespian, um... Yeah. Uh... Tradition. Yeah. Something, I think, I something wrong I think... with my brain. 
I suppose the thing is now, now uh, Nick, it's actually funny that we talked about that the other Saturday night, was that, that, that all the schools now seem to be into this high school musical thing, don't they? Do they? Well, from I mean, I keep seeing posters for amateur productions, which I presume are schools doing it. In this country, I can't believe that people are actually interested in it. It looks so American and saccharine. I mean, mm. uh, not that we are superior to is it, well, is American it a... saccharine, but it's just mm. we don't do saccharine like they do. We have our other, uh, our own special type of saccharine. What is it? Is it about a school play that a school put on a play or what? I don't know. It's just some di uh, some anodyne Disney thing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I, know, I think, as I said, the number two is in the pipeline, so I don't know how they're going to get round that. Be interesting to see. The no, other thing, Nick, do you, do you buy the Independent? No. They had a, I was picked up one on a on a train today, and it listed the five places in the world that are the most dangerous to go as a tourist. Right. Number one was Thailand. Thailand. Yeah. How is that dangerous well, what for they tourists? Said, what they said with Thailand is that there's a lot of um, people there that are elderly. It said most of the deaths are long-term elderly British residents. Well, that doesn't make it dangerous. Well, yeah, I suppose it is, because they've gone there as a, you know, as a tourist. I mean, they're still English, aren't they? It says 224 Britons died in Thailand between April and March of last year. Of natural causes? Well, yes. Uh, so, yes, I suppose so, but even so, I well, suppose... it's just as dangerous as staying home, then. Yeah, I suppose so. I uh, question the validity of this list. Oh. Is this a scientifically accurate list? Well, it's, it's an independent list. Oh, well. <laughs> Number two, Australia. Again, this is nonsense. It says that they feel that people drop their guard. How do you mean? Well, when they go there, you know, like the violent deaths that have been there, you know, with the... the like, in the outback and things like that. Oh, that was one. Yeah. It's, it says that, uh, of course, there's the dangers, isn't there? The, uh, the snakes and the, uh, the jellyfish. This is all what it says here. I'm not making this up. Well, I think they're making it up. I've never heard such rubbish. Yeah, the, the first one is Thailand and the second one is Australia for the yeah. most dangerous places to be... A oh, tourist. To go, to go as, as, as a tourist. tourist. Number what? three is India. Rubbish. India. Oh, yeah. Right. Why? Oh, dear. Hang on. <laughs> right. It's the second deadliest destination for Britons, with 100 and... Sorry, this is depressing, isn't it? 111 people dying, down to illness. It, it says some are violent, but it says that people... It says a lot of the people are Indian people living in this country, residents, who forget to take the necessary precautions with their injections, you know, malaria and the other things. Right. Don't order a drink with um, ice in it, mm. and uh, skip the salad, I think, is the best advice. Right. Number four is the Czech Republic. Well, this... I'm sorry, uh, uh, Philip, but... Uh, I'm only... I'm just... Uh, I thought myself... I'm, uh, I know he'd tear it to pieces, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it said here that the local police found that 20% of all weekend crime in Prague involved British men on stag trips. Yes, that's right. Well, that doesn't make Prague a dangerous place. It just makes British tourists a dangerous gang to hang around. Mm. It says you can have two nights in Prague for as little as £42. Pound. That's what oh. it says here. So, I don't that know. In, that include booze? I suppose so. Well, it's all in, I suppose. Taking it with them. And number five, which is the final one, Greece. The most dangerous country for Britons. It has the highest number of hospitalisations. 955 British nationals. Treatment between April 05 and March last year. Probably all for shock after having been ripped off in a taxi. Have you ever <laughs> taken a taxi in Greece? I've never been to Greece. What's it like? Um, it's a rip-off. Is it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's all funny money, and it looks like, uh, you know, a modern art masterpiece, These uh, yeah. this uh, money when you go over there. Yeah. And you get in a taxi, and you've got no idea where you're going, and you can barely see through the smog. Yeah. And you get out the other end, and he's, uh, you, uh, with a nice, uh, smiling, confident face, he'll tell you how much it is, and then you, you look at this fistful of cash, and he'll uh, say, it's one of those and one of those. And you get out, confident that you've done the right thing, and then as you stand by, and he disappears in a cloud of smoke, you realise that you've just spent... Fifty pounds oh. on going half a mile. Oh. I mean, American money always gets me because, I mean, the dollar bills and the other ones are all the same. Yeah, they all they? look exactly the same. It's very strange. Yeah, you know. I sort of separate mine, you know, on the occasions when I've been there. Anyway, Nick, that's the uh, that's all I got for tonight. Right. Well, I disapprove of that list for that. Oh, okay. Well, you you get in touch with the Independent. I will do. Okay, Nick. Must do better next time. All right. Okay. Bye. Thanks a lot, Philip. This is LBC. City Maroof is the new. Anybody care what this guy thinks? No! Didn't the Sun, um, they're, they're are they advertising with those The Simpsons movie? 
Ah. Uh, Simpsons movie. Are they advertising for those? I don't if they were. For a bit. Not anymore. Not anymore. Okay. I can't remember where I reviewed the film. I reviewed it extensively on this station. Was it on Saturday night or was it with you? I, f I forget where I do. I think it was a Saturday night. Right, okay. Here we go again. Not for very long, just for a little bit. Um, uh, they're running an advert which says, which, and the only quote they have in the advert for the Simpsons film is from the News of the World, which says something of the order of, it's the funniest film of the century. I think those might be the actual words they used. The News of the World, by coincidence, is owned by the same company that makes the Simpsons movie. Huh. Coincidence? I don't think so. Right. Have you seen the Simpsons movie yet? No. Is it any good? Is it any good? Let's have a think. Boring! What? No, it is boring. Why? It's the least funny, funny film I've ever seen. Is... Uh, it, and I really mean that. Is that because it was hyped up too much? No, it's because it's not funny. Is it... but isn't it just the same... No, gags? unfortunately not. No. If you'd watched three episodes of the, any three, even the unfunny episodes of The Simpsons back to back, you would laugh more than watching The Simpsons movie. I'm stunned at how unfunny it was. Didn't you avoid all, like, the, the pre-hype though beforehand? Did I avoid it? Yeah. Well, hard to avoid it. Or, like, you, just, you didn't watch any clips of it, no, any trailers right. or all, anything no. like that? None at all, no. And that didn't even improve the viewing Not of it? one jot. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, I was sorry to have uh, wasted half a day. Even though it was free, so I can't complain, but I apparently still am. Here's Grantley in Kent. Hello. Yeah, hi there, uh, Nick. I was just calling to completely disagree with your preconception of Staffordshire Bull Terrier owners. Yeah. Having owned one uh, myself, firstly, I have no tattoos. Um, I don't speak with an East End accent, uh, and I'm not the stereotype that you were uh, implying. Uh, secondly, I think a lot of people like myself do admire their um, uh, tenacious and athletic abilities. Right, which abilities, not... abilities to bite people's faces off, you mean? Okay, right, then I put it to you. If, that's, if that was the reality, how comes the 1991 Dangerous Dogs Act did not include the Staffordshire Bull Terrier? Because the Dangerous Dogs Act didn't go far enough. Um, why would they do it with a foreign breed and not a native breed if it hasn't gone far enough when there was a lot more Staffords in the country than there were pit bulls at the time? Because the law is an ass. Right, okay, then I also put it to you that if you look at the statistics, a Staffordshire Bull Terrier and the, Ken the, the Kennel Club themselves actually do call the Staffordshire Bull Terrier the nanny dog, and they will tell you it's one of the best dogs to have with small children. Right, I seriously, I seriously doubt that. The, what's the difference oh, uh, between a, a Staffordshire Bull Terrier and a Pit Bull? I mean, they look exactly the same to anybody. No, first, first anybody they don't look exactly the same, um, but the difference is, historically, the... Uh, in the, in the black country of, uh, of England, the Staffordshire Bull Terrier was bred as a fighting dog. It was previously known as the Bull and Terrier, which right. was an infusion. Oh, hold on, it was an infusion of the old um, bulldog and, um, and, a, and some terrier blood was infused as well to make it quicker. And right. it was well, used. The history of it's quick. irrelevant. It was bred as a fighting dog. That's all you Correct. need to know. Okay, and I also say further to that. Back in, back in history, um, the reason why fighting dogs were usually, not always, but usually, not aggressive towards people is because people were there in the pit with the people uh, while the dogs were fighting. And the dog's aggression was generally directed towards each other and not towards people. Yeah, and, th and this sort of thing, forgive me, Grantly, but uh, this sort of thing is said by people who have had no trouble with their uh, lovely little doggies until the moment when something goes off in their brains and it bites their feet off. Okay, um, I recently put Simba down, who was uh, my staff, and she lived uh, nearly 16 years old. Never once in her life did she show any human being, particularly children, any aggression. Right, okay, well, one instance doesn't a trend make. I mean, if you were... Uh, you know, I really don't want to get into an argument with doggy people because there's no win in it, because they're just no, never going to bring them around. But it's true. If you uh, chosen a pet that was bred for its fighting ability, then, um, I don't know, maybe you have to rethink your choice. That's all I'm going to say. It's a good idea to get someone else's opinion. So Ian is off on his... We don't really even know what he's doing, or where he's doing it, um, on who he's doing it to. Jolly? No idea. Huh? On a little jolly? 
Oh, I thought you were giving that as a name for somebody who we might be doing it to. Jolly. <laughs> I, d I don't know who Jolly is. Uh, right, so we've got no idea where he is. Um, He's gone. He's not here. Enjoying the summer. Yes, perhaps uh, enjoying the summer, which I think ends after the weekend. Well, it might end today. Oh, is it today? Conflicting reports about whether it's going to be raining this weekend or not. No one's really got any idea. Uh, it's just one giant disappointment. How can it end today? It's only just started today. Yeah, it started yesterday, oh. I believe, and, um, we were all over uh, by the shouting <laughs> by, uh, Sunday. Didn't it- it rained yesterday, though, didn't it? Did it? a few seconds. Rained? Yeah. Holly berries are in the hedgerows, conkers and apples are falling from the trees, mushrooms are springing up in the fields. All the signs are that the briefest of brief English summers is coming to an end on the uh, the, the beginning of August. Autumn is already upon us. Nature is telling us. So we're not going to get that Indian summer. A growing number of experts believe that this year's unpredictable weather, which brought on an early spring, then deluged Britain with record rainfall, has taken us straight to autumn, bypassing summer altogether. At least it's been warm. Fruiting holly has been spotted in Hampshire, conkers appearing in Essex, blackberries are ripe in Devon, orchards are preparing for an early harvest. The recent downpours and relatively cool weather tricked some plants into thinking that winter was on the way. Stupid plants. <laughs> So we'll just go back to sleep. Yeah. Meteorologists say that for much of the summer the jet stream has been further south and stronger than a typical summer, and this has resulted in uh, many depressions crossing southern and central parts of Britain. Yeah, you're not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> We're all depressed. <laughs> a spokesman for the Met Office um, said it was too early to say... Um, uh, the, the, no, he said that uh, we've just had the wettest summer since 1766, so it's unsurprising that this has affected the crops. There is evidence to suggest that within a warmer climate we will see wetter winters and warmer summers. Well, I don't mind a wetter winter, just, just that we could have a warmer summer would be nice. Yeah, but it has been warm though, hasn't it? It's just been wet at the same time. No, I've been sh I've been sh shuffling around in my s slippers, my fluffy slippers and my winter fleece. I think it's chilly. I think it's chilly out there now. Really? Yeah. The thing is, I don't mind getting wet as long as it's quite warm, you know, and then you don't catch a chill. So you like being tepid? Yeah, if that's the word. Right. Um, how about Hampstead? Hello, Tony. Hello there, Nick. Tony. I think the whole world has got dangerous. I think if I was anywhere in the world and there was a problem with hijacking or whatever, would you be confident to pull out your British passport and declare you were British? Um, in uh, Luxembourg and Monaco, perhaps, yes. Well, I mean, uh, the, the other thing that comes to mind, the other part of the world, is Colombia. And all you need to be at risk of getting a bullet in the brain in Colombia is one if you're Colombian, and if you're, uh, you belong to a trade union movement. In fact, North trade union members were killed in Colombia in the year 2004. Most dangerous part of the world uh, to be belong to a trade union movement. Right. I mean, the whole world's going mad, isn't it? <laughs> uh, yes, that's exactly correct, Tony. The whole world has gone mad. Yes. And uh, let me let me say one last thing. The in Colombia, uh, a school teacher, virtually for every week of the year two thousand and four, was shot dead. Some of them shot in front of their pupils. And re reason because they joined the trade union movement. Right, you seem to be um, very exercised about Colombia. I would suggest well, you don't I go read there. The, uh, I read the statistics from the United Nations aid agencies, and these are the countries, you know, why, what, you know, what sort of interest have we got in these parts of the world? But you, your program on, you know, it's, where it's dangerous to go and dangerous to Brits and all the rest of it, um, you know, I think that it's dangerous in London, isn't it? I mean, stabbings and shootings. And I think the whole world's gone mad. Well, uh, my parents just had um, a, a visitor from Los Angeles, and she was concerned about the violence in London. My, my how things have changed. Yeah, you're right. Well, look, look, uh, it's, it's, um, a, it's a great concern to us all. Thanks a lot for worrying us further. Cheers, Tony. Uh, yeah, Colombia. I don't think that's on my, uh, my holiday destination list. I mean, Italy, perhaps. I'm sure it's very, very nice there. Yeah. But then, teachers, you know, teachers are, are lucky to uh, end the working day without getting shot in this country. Hmm. But, but it has nothing to do with being a union member. It has more to do with giving their pupils disrespect. 
Oh yeah, you can't you can't have any disrespect in the classroom. No, apparently not. Not from the teacher anyway. No. The pupils, little fluffy kins, the little boo boos, they're allowed to do anything they want. <laughs> it's the law. How about ah? Oh, hi, Louise. Hi, Nick. How you doing? Oh, I'm good, thank you. All right. Yeah. Good. Um, you were talking about reality TV. Mm. I think you know what the problem is with TV is that reality TV is that popular. Even if no one watches it, they still sort of do. So if they can't think of anything else to put on, they'll just say, "Oh, let's do a reality TV program," and it'll get put on. It's that they're yeah. Well, okay. Yeah. Here's, um, here's the truth. Just because it's popular is not a good reason to, um, make it. I mean, if you- Basically, If yeah. the government picked someone from the population at random and tortured them in your town square, that would also be popular. People would show up, they'd take picnics, wouldn't they? Mm. Just so, <laughs> just because it's popular is not a good idea. It doesn't mean to say you actually have to do it. Yeah, but, but it's also cheap. It, it, mm. it, it, um, dispenses with writers. You just have to point a camera at somebody and uh, get uh, uh, somebody on work experience to edit it up afterwards and then just slap it on the air. No expense spent. Yeah, it's just ratings there that we're after. Plus, it's that they're uh, mentally bankrupt. The uh, people in TV, they don't have any ideas anymore. When was the last time you saw an actually nothing, fresh idea on nothing television? Nothing's been done Everything's been done. Yeah. That's the problem. <laughs> like Pink Floyd said, everything's been done under the sun. <laughs> They're not wrong. Not now, anyway. And if they just kept showing the, like, repeats of old TV programmes, especially on the DSC, people would be complaining. But I don't think that would work either. Well, people will, uh, people will complain about anything. Stop whining! <laughs> Stop whining. I'd rather a repeat of a good programme than a new programme that's rubbish. Yeah, yeah. I, I watch the same things all the time. Yeah, me too. Over and over and over again. Larry yeah. Sanders, Third Rock from the Sun, <laughs> over and over and over again. Yeah. And, um, oh. Staffish and Bull Terriers as well. Mm. Um, I have one. You have one? Yes, and I am scared of her because she is pure muscle and I know how powerful she can be. Exactly. And, like, it, she, she's not nasty and she doesn't bark and she's so far. Go for it so far, but I've seen her be nasty with a dog before. Yes. And that scared me because she was going, well, not going for it, but she was barking at it and she was. Nothing. See, well, the reason I got, I got into this, and the reason I'm, I'm down on dogs like that, is that you really shouldn't have, as a pet, something that is stronger than you are. Yeah, but she's only done that once. I mean, um, yeah, but... Well, I, the next I, time she does it, you won't be calling for a while. <laughs> I, know, <laughs> I know, but I'm just saying not all people have them. Type yeah, of you'll be in hospital really waiting for a new <laughs> face. <laughs> yes. Get a pet that you could handle, it's e even in its <laughs> angriest state. <laughs> she's my mum's. I can't just say, oh, excuse me, can you just get a sip of the dog, please, mum? Right. Well. And, oh, my mum's one of those people that just think, ooh, is there anyone so baby? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's my little baby. Yeah, yeah until it, uh, turns. Yeah. yeah. Okay, thanks, Louise. <laughs> All right, thanks, Nick. Ta-ta. Bye. And, and the people that normally are walking these dogs, and it's not the case with everybody, Mm -hmm. But generalizations are, are, uh, exist for a reason. They've got no control over them at all. If the dog just snapped, and who knows why these dogs snap, it's just, uh, you know, something will not look right to them, and then they'll go for it, be it, um, a piece of, like a stick, or a baby, or me. <laughs> and the reason that I'm, uh, against them is, in a fight, they'd probably come off better. They fight with their face. How scary is that? And, and you always see them being walked by like a teenage girl. Yes, like, exactly. 14, yes, and the dog just dragging mm -hmm. her along the pavement. So you'd have no control over it whatsoever. Why don't you just get a hamster? Why don't I get a hamster? Well, people, I, people I prefer who the have flat not to stink. People who have uh, um, pets that are stronger yes. than they are. Or they could get just one of those little. <laughs> One of those little handbag, uh, dogs. Put a bow in its hair, lovely. Just as long as you can stop it yapping. Oh, I don't even like those because they just yap at your ankles. Yeah, that's just, right. You know, just gnawing away your bone. Yeah, <laughs> dogs in general, I think, with it, we should, we should cease our love of dogs in general. Oh, you're gonna get yourself in a big pile of dog goo <laughs> if you start this. I don't want any more calls about dogs. You see, I, I, I'm a bit wary of cats, because they're cats vicious. Cats are fine. No, they're vicious. Have you oh, ever- Well, they give you a little scratch. 
Yeah, jump on oh, your they're, face. They're yeah. not. They're, they're scratches are e oh, they're, they're a little bit evil. Have you heard a cat fight at night? <laughs> yeah, well, that's other cats. That's the funniest. I know, but ever. you know, they, they could, they could flip, couldn't they? A cat. <laughs> a cat could flip. Just um, you know, a switch will go off in its head, and well, so could a goldfish. But it's not going to do you much harm either. Oh yeah, a cat can do more harm than a goldfish. Yeah, it can. It can give you a, a nasty little. Oh. S light scratch, you poor baby. It's a scratch more than I want. Right. Have you got Have you got any pets? No. A, a horse. <laughs> 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 you can control it very well. You've huh? got a horse. <laughs> yeah. He said no, and then he said a horse, as though a horse is small enough to overlook. I forgot. I, I forgot. It's, uh, it's well. I, don't I know the amount of people that own horses, and they just completely uh, escapes their um, uh, their mind. I don't uh, class it as a pet. That's why I said no. I was thinking, oh, goldfish. But how hamsters? can you have a horse? Hmm. Um. It's, it's well. It's my girlfriend, so it's technically not mine. Right. So. Uh, how can you? G where? Where? Where do you live? Like out in sticks. Right. We have to. What, like Brixton, somewhere like that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, don't go to Brixton and ask for horse, okay? It's 8.15, this is LBC, let's have some travel now with Alan Joyce. Thanks, Nick, and finally some good news. We love you a long time. And I really mean that, Edwina. Gosh, hello, Nick. Edwina. How are you doing? I'm super, thanks for asking. Yeah. Just made you a cup of tea yet? Uh, just the one, yeah. Oh, good? Yeah, it was, uh... It was, it was lovely. Mm -hmm. He's looking at me expectantly. <laughs> <laughs> it was lovely, Chris. Well done. Just <laughs> ask me nicely and yeah. I'll go and get you another. Can I have another? Yes. <laughs> Good. Um, Nick. Actually, it wasn't very nice, was it? Chris, please. Uh, that was whiny. That Chris, was whiny. would you mind ever so much making me a cup of tea? Thanks awfully. <laughs> Certainly, right, sir. That sounded too artificial. Oh, yeah, it did, didn't it? Mm. Um, can I, I fancy a cup of tea. Do you mind, Chris? Well, that was sort of normal, wasn't That's it? Normal. That's about as normal as I get. Yeah. If you ask again, you're not going to get it. That's six cups of tea so far, I want. Good. Nick, how do you feel when waking up one morning you find... What, just as the sun was rising? No, no. no. You find a, a blank envelope on your doormat and when opening it, there's a £50 note inside. I would like that. Would you? Would you really be happy and think, oh, more bacon or chocolate? <laughs> <laughs> Chocolate's going up in price, so you probably would need a 50. Yeah. yeah. Well, something extraordinary happened, happened in Tokyo, in Japan, yeah. because residents in uh, an apartment block were having these blank envelopes posted through their letterboxes with uh, sums of money. And they were also finding money uh, in public loos, and money was fluttering down from the skies. I heard the I heard the toilets thing, but I hadn't heard that the story was continuing. Yeah, and uh, in the toilets, um, th there was a little note that said, you know, uh, do good with with this. But the residents and the people who uh, found this money, uh, instead of feeling happy and thinking, oh, thank goodness, you know, someone's been very generous. And uh, thinking about me, they, they've become really stressed and anxious and uh, d didn't want to talk about it. And all the money, according to the police, has been handed in. What? Yeah, e everything. And nobody knows who, who has been donating this money and why. And I thought, gosh, that is an extraordinary story because if that happened to me, I would think, thank you very much. Well, is, is it perhaps because um, the person who's done this has rigged all of their apartments with the cam secret cameras and he's actually paying them for their performance? Well, this is what uh, the people uh, are worried about. Is it someone watching them? Uh, is it someone uh, thinking if they accept it, they're greedy uh, because they're not that poor? I mean, they're not that well off, but, you know... Um, or it's tantamount to uh, accepting a contract, but yeah, they don't know what the contract states. Exactly. Right. Yeah. I mean, the only thing, the reservation I think I would have would be, um, hmm, is the stolen money. Yeah, uh, I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> I'll <laughs> sign anything. I'll do anything for 50 <laughs> quid, Edwina. I mean it. I know. But I think this is, uh, uh, on the whole, an extraordinary reaction uh, to an, an, an anonymous gift. 
and uh, that's one of the most difficult sentences in the world. <laughs> Twinning Anne with anonymous. I know. I, I, I dare I, you to say it I ten know, times quickly. I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> <laughs> Alarm bells sounded off in your mind at the beginning of that yes. sentence. You thought, oh I've, no, I'm, there's, I've stumbled, there's a I? high jump coming here. <laughs> <laughs> I surely stumbled. Well, it sounds like some sort of um, uh, mass uh, hysteria, some sort of panic has set yes. in in the building. That's yes. crazy. Yes, and so the people are not happy at all. Right. Um, well, you should send it to me. <laughs> I'll laugh on their behalf. <laughs> yes, I thought that might amuse yeah. you. In fact, mm. I'll give you, if, you know, just in case anybody feels generous, here's my address. Oh, don't. <laughs> <laughs> Well, why not? There's no, what could possibly go wrong? Oh, dear. Stalkers. You've heard of stalkers, have you? <laughs> uh, yes. Mm. All right, you, actually, for someone who's done a four-hour stint, you're, you're particularly chipper. Chipper, yeah. yeah. Rock and roll! Mm. <laughs> well, that's what rock and roll will do to you. Yeah. Four hours of it. Enjoy your evening. Thanks, Edwina. Bye. Cheers, my dear. Ta-da. Here is uh, Milil Alexander. Good evening to you. Hello. When was the last time you were in Greece? I'm not very good at history, but it was several years ago. Several years ago? Yeah. Yes. Well, I've been in, in a black London cab, and they charged me extra money going to Regent's Park. I had an overseas people, which I spoke their language, and uh, I said, why is this is not the amount that it's on the meter? He said, because it's a Saturday. I said, I've never heard that before. No, he said, on Saturdays we charge more. Was what? that a rip-off or not? It's so long since I've had the kind of money that you would need to get into a cab that I can't remember. There is there is extra charge at the weekend, I know that. In or London? late at night or something like that. They do charge extra for certain daytime. things. I'm not talking after 12. Right. I don't know is the answer. Ripped off here. Yeah. Well, quite possibly. But, and, uh, but what kind but, of fun, kind of funny money have they got there? 15 European countries use euro. What kind of funny money did Greece have? What kind of funny money? Yeah, you said uh, they used some kind of uh, funny money and... Uh, yeah, well, chose... to us, Euros are funny money, but, th but I was in Greece before uh, the Euro. Before the Euro? Yeah. Ah, oh, so that was the drachma, presumably. Yeah, that'll be it. Yes. Listen, Alexander, yes. as, as soon as I s saw that the, a person called Alexander wanted to defend, to defend Greece, yes. I knew I was on uh, a loser before I even started. But the thing with the difference is that, uh, that Greek and particularly uh, Athens cab drivers yes. are notorious for ripping people off. London's black cab drivers, on the other hand, are not. Even in the Frommer's Guide, I think it was the Frommer's Guide was the one that I took with me, it said, whatever you do, <laughs> don't get in a cab, you will be ripped off. And I thought, well, I'm a savvier tourist than that, not me, mate. And you know what? I was. Well, presumably they do the same in uh, Bangkok as well. Quite when possibly. I... When I go there, I'll buy it and find out. <laughs> Thanks, yeah. Alexander. And uh, about the uh, air, about well, the it what? has been cleared up. About the what? The air pollution, the air. Yeah. Where he has been cleared. How did they do that then? Well, after, before the uh, Olympic Games, they were clearing up all these kind of things. They cleared up the air. Well, uh, the pollution. <laughs> How did they do that then? The pollution. Uh, no, I don't think so. I, I just spoke to somebody who came back from Greece, and they said uh, you could barely breathe. Still there, is it? Yeah, apparently so. All right. <laughs> So, well, one out of two isn't bad. Well done, mate. Cheers. <laughs> Ta-ta. Okay, bye. This is uh, LBC. I'm Nick Abbott. I'm uh, sitting in for Ian, who is um, absent without... Well, I guess he had, does have leave, because otherwise um, it would be just silence here. It would have all been a surprise. So that's not true. Uh, punch that one up. Uh, Alex, stop typing. I'll get him. He's not listening to me. He's um, having a little chat. Tell him to stop chatting to them. I can't get him off the phones. Yak, 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 yak. That's all he does. Lovely tea. <laughs> Just get him off the phone, I mean it. What on earth were you doing? Nattering away, Alex. Someone's got to answer the phone in this place. Yeah, you just say, hello, what would you like to talk about? Oh, you, you I'll put you on hold. Tell me his life story. Well, no yeah. one's interested. <laughs> <laughs> but you are, I'm amazed. Yeah. Uh, is it someone who wants to defend black cabbies? Uh, he wants to tell you about, um, the meter. 
The meter. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, this would be good to know for the the next time that I um, get into a cab, which will be these, which will be the, the the day on which they reduce their prices by half. <laughs> Ash, hello. Hello. How are you? How are you? I'm all right. Good. Good. Um, yeah, just um, uh, your previous caller actually mentioned that um, he, he was um, overcharged on the meter. Yeah. Um, normally, the way that black cabs work is um, all their accounts are actually done on that same meter. So um, if, if the price is um, if the price is not actually on the meter, then and, and he got overcharged, then he did actually get ripped off. Right. Um, but what he can also do, and the law actually supports him, is if a, a mini cab or a black cab driver ever overcharges you, you can actually just point blank refuse to pay. And even if, if police were called, they'll actually support your case. Um, yeah, I don't think many people would have the nerve to actually because they they can often be, well often larger than I am, so, well, but I'm not about to get into a cab anyway, who can afford that? They can also lock you in. Yeah, that's true, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a bit dangerous, but, um, you know, at the same time, if you, if you felt a bit gutsy or a little bit brave, then, hey, take your chances. You right. might save yourself 20 quid. Okay, thanks, Ash. Take care, bye. I went to, um, a London's loveliest Hyde Park this week. I had a picnic. Here's a tip. As soon as the sun comes out, you have to throw your hands in the air and rush screaming outside, because it might be the last we see of it for eight months. Yeah, I did that this week as well. Hyde Park? Uh, St. James's Park. Oh, ah, right. That's a completely different. It's almost like being in a different country, St. James Park to Hyde Park. Is it? I've, uh, w without exaggerating, I think I was perhaps the only European in Hyde Park. They call it Londonistan, don't they? Do they? I thought all parks are the same. No, they certainly are not. It was like taking a picnic in, um, Jerusalem. Or, you know, one of the sandy areas. Middle East. Yeah. Well, that's probably because there are lots of tourists about, isn't there? No, I think they live there. I think they're, um... What, in the park? <laughs> no, oh. that is against the bylaws. Uh, why are they called bylaws, by the way? Do they actually close Hyde Park at night, or is it just open all the time? It doesn't have barriers around it. No, I don't think the parks, they can. They? Huh? I think they close all the parks. No, they can't the close. Royal Park. They can't close them. They, they don't do have do they? they have big gates at the entrances? Well, all the way around, though. Yeah. yeah, but they only have gates. They don't have fences. They just have a gate. Oh, yeah, I mean, you could jump in if you're <laughs> really determined to get some <laughs> park No, you could action. just, you could stroll in, because there are no fences. Well, they have, don't they have, um... No, you're right, actually. Suddenly you started thinking. squeaking like a girl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're that, right. That's a sign he's just, wrong. I was just thinking. Yeah. yeah they have that's, um, that's a, a, thing, um, yeah. a boat on the Serpentine now, which is all made of glass. It's like, um, it's like your granddad's greenhouse has um, slipped its moorings and is afloat. <laughs> 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 it's does, true. It, does it actually move? Of course it moves. Yeah, but it might just be when it was like... I know. That was, uh, yeah. that was uh, unnecessarily it, aggressive of me. It yeah, was. You're quite right. No, I, I apologise. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, it moves about. It goes from one end to uh, the other. You can... It, it is like a greenhouse. It's just completely made of glass. Is it... Isn't Serpentine, like, like, a hundred yards long? Yeah, it's a hundred yards long, yeah. It costs fifty-six pounds. Excellent value for money. Need help quitting smoking? Affirmative. The eco-campaigners at Heathrow. Um... Are they... <clears throat> are they uh, fighting for their right to party? Are they fighting for their right to climb over and chop through fences and sit down on the runways? Because that's got to be disallowed. Right? So, well, it's illegal for a start. Isn't well, exactly. It? Yeah. yeah. I mean, you can't fight for your right to destroy other people's property just because you know you think that you're doing the right thing. No. But are they fighting for their right just to hold a protest near, nearby? I thought they weren't even going to be at the airport. They were going with tube and stuff. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. Is there? What, we're having a protest on the tube? Or anywhere. Um... I mean, as long as you're not actually stopping planes taking off. <laughs> but if you're disrupting other commuters... They don't do themselves any favours, basically, do they? When they take videos of themselves chopping through, um, the chain-link fence that surrounds Heathrow, no. and then sitting down on the runway. I mean, that's just stupid. Why would they do that? Why would they think that that would be acceptable, or that anybody would let them get away with it? But campaigning for fewer flights is an excellent idea. Or campaigning for fewer flights that actually travel over London. I was uh, watching the, um, they, they call it the, the, the string of uh, pearls, don't they, or diamonds or whatever they call it, the, the, tr the planes that come in, uh, once every minute or so, once every three minutes, something like that. It's less than that, I think. It's like 40 seconds, I think. No. 
I think it's once every three minutes, something like that, or minute, anyway, whatever it is. They come in from the north, low out of the rising sun, and about a mile out, we put on the music. Yeah. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> we could sit here and uh, recreate the entire film, couldn't we, Alex? Yeah. <laughs> Chris yeah, doesn't have the faintest idea what we're talking about. Nope. Uh, yeah, they play Wagner. Scares the hell out of the... Can't say it. But they come in from the north, the northwest, and then they make this giant loop around. Uh, so they fly over the whole of North London. Yeah. And as then, as though that weren't bad enough, they they hang a right, and then they fly over all of the parts of London that they haven't previously <laughs> woken up at six o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Why do they need to fly over all of London? You think that uh, the logical thing would be to fly over land where the fewest people live, in case something goes wrong with the aircraft and it has to uh, make a, an emergency landing. Yeah. You think, why don't they do it, like, out Oxford way and... Yeah, or just, just places where, you know, there are more cows than people. Like, why does it have to fly over all of London? It's almost doing a zigzag just to make sure that it doesn't miss anywhere. I, isn't it? Isn't it because um, to do with flying, they got to fly into the wind or something like well, that? Well, if that's what it is, why does it? Why does it need like a ten-mile run-up? I mean, planes could do uh, like a sharp bank. They could uh, they could bank over Windsor and still make the uh, make the, uh, the 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 runway in but time. That, I don't think I don't think that's a safe maneuver. What bank turning? Planes are perfectly able to turn. I the, know, The only uh, form of uh, machinery that can't turn are American motorbikes, can only go in a straight line. Really? Yeah. Oh, no. No, I think, uh, because the, they've got, the pilots have got so much to concentrate on when they're coming into land, Believe anyway. Believe me, the pilots are sitting with their feet up having a cocktail. They're not concentrating on anything. It's a machine that's bringing them in, like Star Wars. No. I, I know this to be true. No, it's not. Absolutely. It is it, not. It a hundred percent is, and here's why I know. Okay. If it were a human at the controls, then the line that the plane takes would veer by, let's agree, at ten foot. Right. It doesn't, because there's, uh, right, wh where I watch them from, there's a roof light, which is, I'd say, about two foot square. Yeah. So you can see the, the sky in the roof light, and, mm. on a, and when the planes are uh, taking a certain line, Every single plane blacks out the roof light to the point that it's not just um, a little bit of the plane is somewhere in the roof light. Yeah. It's the exact. It, it, you see the nose of each plane as it goes as it uh, goes over the uh, the roof light. You know what I'm saying? As the, the, yeah. Watching the reflection of the sky in the roof light, the exact same part of each plane that goes over. Um, is reflected in this roof light. So it's definitely a machine that's bringing them in. Their hands are off the controls. It's got nothing to do with them. Is this how you spend your days off? Stapled to my balcony, yes. <laughs> Super glued, I am. Yeah. Wow. No, but I thought they... OK, they, they can do, like, you know, automatic landings and all that, but only to a point. The last actual stage of the landing where the, the wheels come into contact with the ground, that has to be done by hand. I'm pretty sure. No, it right. does. I think as it's do the last the, three minutes the, or something. The stewardesses. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I think it's the last three <laughs> minutes or something. Has is always manual. Rubbish. The same just take off. What yeah, because just in case there's an emergency and they have, you know, they have they to take spill their over. drink. Yeah. Oh well. Whatever it might be. Oh well, we have to agree to disagree. Yes, I'm right again. Here is um, a mobile. Hello. 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 Hello, mate. I live right under the Ethra Airport, and I'm telling you, they are rushing in every 45 to 50 seconds. Right, are they all, not all on the same, um... On, on, yeah, because they change runways at, uh, three o'clock each day. Do either they? the east direction or the west direction. And all day long, well, from five o'clock in the morning, they're coming in. Right. And you live under Heathrow. That must be awful and for you. Under it, I, well, I could stand on my doorstep and do the proverbial, you know, and probably touch the runway. <laughs> for a moment there, I didn't know what you meant by do the proverbial, but now we've got a vivid image. Thanks yeah. a lot, mate. <laughs> Cheers. Right. Uh, yeah, every 45 seconds. I'm not so sure about that, but it's, there's a lot of them. And you do wonder, who are all these people? Where why are they weren't, going? Yeah, why weren't they satisfied with where they were? <laughs> What's so amazing. bad about where they were that they had to get on a plane, a screaming metal tube, eat airline food, and, uh, and uh, come into Heathrow? 
Isn't it? Uh, I always thought though that, that not every every single plane load is actually coming here. They're just using it as a, like a stop off point because it was like the last like major airport before you know you go you go across the, the states, aren't we? If you if yeah, a lot of people are just passing through. Yeah, aren't they? I've never heard such a lot of old rubbish in all my life. Well, what is wrong with that? That's a perfectly <laughs> good theory. <laughs> You never, you never. When you've you gone to the airport, how many? When you get there and you hear the announcement, and for people who are transferring to flight, blah blah blah. Oh blah, my blah, god, blah, that's blah. what you do on your days off. It's <laughs> like <laughs> it's a, the, the person is in the room doing it. I can't believe it. Yeah, there's always people. You'll be asking me to pick up the red courtesy phone in a minute. <laughs> yeah. People transferring. No, the white phone. <laughs> 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 you've never agreed with one of my theories. Nelson Mandela to the white courtesy phone. That's an old Robin Williams gag. Here is uh, Bracknell. Hello, Jethro. Yeah, oh, um, um, I guess it was a bit like a metaphor for life, wasn't it? What? Um, we're all just passing through. Right. Oh, cheer up, mate. No, well, that's true, isn't it? We are all just passing through. And I tell you what, when you uh, think when you're um, a youth that time is going by so slow, it's yeah. so boring, especially on a Sunday yeah. when the clock never seems to advance. And then you reach 18 and then you blink your eye and suddenly you're 47 and you think, how did that happen? I'll tell you what you do think. You think, God, I haven't put enough I mean, contributions into my private pension <laughs> fund. Yeah. And I'm going to eat baked beans yeah. after 65 mm. all the days of my life till I pass away in yeah. an NHS um, corridor somewhere, not being looked after by nurses who are too busy doing something else. It's a very bad week to go to hospital. If you can possibly avoid it, do oh, not yeah. go to hospital this week. Do you know why? It's all the rookie doctors. Yeah, um, and um, I know a doctor very well, and he was saying he alerted me to this fact months ago. He said you, you won't believe what's going to happen because I don't think anybody in the NHS can actually believe that it's that, that this is what's um, that, that this is what they've done. Normally, um, junior doctors they they start you know one will start one day and another will start the next week, and it's all staggered. You know, they just start at various times throughout the year. Mm -hmm. <laughs> By the government's uh, grand munificence, they have started 32,000 junior doctors yeah. taking different posts on the same day. That was uh, Wednesday of this week. That is insane. It reminds me of one of those spectacularly surreal American comedy movies, isn't it? You know, like you know, the one that's on the police or what, the one that you just mentioned on the airport, you know, when you've got all the organisational people and they get round and you've got all these... Um, exceptionally enthusiastic doctors who want to practice medicine on, on everyone and they and uh, they're probably going to mistake the old age pensioner for um who's got a liver complaint for the one who's got um i don't know a bladder complaint or something you know i mean no offense to junior doctors but uh, to me they look like they're 12 and you don't want to be treated by someone who looks like like uh, you know they they should still be in school i don't know, I don't nor, know. nor are they completely competent in doing um th the job which is why they're junior doctors yeah. which is why they always have to defer to the consultants who will be unavailable as they're playing golf at the moment yeah there are a few junior doctors that i could probably be interested in in in, in being attended to and by. Oh uh, well, that's uh, that's uh, a, d a different matter entirely. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I like the smell of um, aviation spirit in the morning. Yeah, it smells of. Naplan. Is that well, was that, well, the right reference to the film? It smells of what? Naplan. Oh, Naplan. What yeah. is what is this an anagram we're doing now? No, I thought you'd, I thought you were, you're doing a, you got into a film, I was like, you know, you were talking to one of your co-hosts there, the younger, yeah. the, the younger dudes. Right. Um, I, I thought, and you started making references to a film, and I thought it was, um, I thought it was Apocalypse Now. It is Apocalypse Now, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, there's Frederick, um, what's his name, not, who's the guy, who's the Southern Confederate guy who takes that beach place from the, from the, um, the Viet Minh or the Viet Cong, and he goes, I love the smell of Naplam in the morning. He says that he loves the smell of what? Napalm. Or napalm. Huh? Napalm. Napalm is the right <coughs> answer. <laughs> yeah. You were just making me suffer about a horrible, nasty chemical thing that burns people to death in, in, in a horribly inhumane way, weren't yeah, you? Yeah, which is why he loves the smell of napalm in the morning. Yeah, yeah. Was it, who is the actor? Frederick? No. Oh, crikey. Begins with an R. Begins with an R. It's Rob. 
Richard, Roy, Robert, yeah, d- Roy, d- Reginald, Robert, d- De Niro. No, it's not De Niro. D- Robert, d- Forrest, Gump, Robert, Robert d- Duval. Duval. Hey! <laughs> oh, I thought I was going to die before you got to the end of that. And he gets that poor little rookie to surf. That is so funny, isn't it? Yeah, and you know what? Charlie, don't surf. <laughs> that is so funny. Anyway, do you know in Colombia they eat guinea pigs? Mm. Just to try to tie in the idea of pets and um, and and, and uh, Colombia is a dangerous place to be. Yeah. Well, guinea pigs are pigs. It's bacon. Right. Well, a lot of a lot of, you upset a lot of twelve, thirteen year old um, sort of oh. juveniles in London now. Well, n- none of them should be listening. No, it's well, an adult radio station. Go to bed. Yeah. In China, they eat dogs and rabbits. Yeah. Good. <laughs> In France, they eat horses and frogs. Excellent. <laughs> it's the finches and the Romans used to eat dormice. And Japan, they eat minke whales, which is very sad, I think. And they wear them as coats, too, yeah. That's mink, not minke whales. Yeah, it's the same thing. Is it? Well, furry, 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 furry mammals that swim at low depths in the sea. That's right, they're gigantic. Are they? Which is why you can make coats out of them, yeah. Well, for vain women who just want to look posh and, and, and important. And keep warm, yeah. And they, as they stroll into top London restaurants and theatres. I know. Yeah. Oh, I, don't, I dream of to- uh, strolling into a top London restaurant or theatre, don't you? You what, in a mink coat? <laughs> well, with or without it, totally buck naked would be nice. <laughs> I think that's taking liberty too far myself. Yeah, OK. Only on and a special one more thing? You'd have to call ahead to make a reservation. Yeah, uh, but, yeah, but there might be someone might come up with the idea of having a naturist hotel where you could actually do that. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm, uh, I, I'm certain. The market. All I'd have to do is put on about uh, twenty stone, and I'd be, I'd fit right in. To what? Naturism. Why do you need to get weight to go to to? to... Anyone who divests themselves of all their clothes is almost, by definition, gigantically fat and hideous. No offence, but. You know, you've upset all the naturists in London. You <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing very well. Here, I've got to go. I'm past the okay, break. Bye. Cheers, my dear. Tata. This is LBC. <laughs> Travel now with Alan Joyce. Thanks, Nick. Some better news on the M1, then. Thanks. This is all about... This is very important. If you learn nothing else from this show, you'll have learnt nothing else from this show. But this could save your life. Do not go into hospital for at least, I would say, two months, if you can possibly avoid it. Really? Patients groups are predicting mayhem on hospital wards this week as 32,000 junior doctors take up new posts all on the same day. I mean, this is just so stupid. It's, it's just beyond belief. It's just, it's, you could file it under, you couldn't make it up. Mm. Because when, when junior doctors start, they need constant supervision. They're scared, apart from anything else. And I know this to be true because I've known a, a doctor you know, all the way from his, well, when he started being a junior doctor. And you don't act, the, the worst thing you want to do is kill someone. That would be uh, the, the number one thing to try and avoid, right? And you don't really know what you're doing, which is why you're still a junior doctor. You don't have the experience. And the last thing you want to do is, if you're on a ward at night, is to call up the consultant, who of course won't be there, he'll be at home asleep, sure. with instructions, depending on how scary the consultant is, to not call him. I mean, if, so- if something bad happened here, um, uh, say, um, like you were on uh, overnights, for instance, mm. something bad happened, would you want to get straight on the phone to your boss and wake him up? Uh, no, I'd no, try and You'd try and out. fix it out yourself, exactly right. <laughs> Somebody has called here in the middle of the night, though, and not because they couldn't turn their, um, they couldn't get their computer to work and it wasn't turned on. <laughs> <laughs> that was quite recently. Well, they probably dialed 999 first. Mm. And then our, uh, our, ours was the second But is there, is there enough, like, normal doctors to supervise all these uh, junior doctors? Um, I would seriously doubt that. No, not 32,000 of them, no. Because these are the, they're the grunts, they're the ones that do all the work, right? Yeah. And you don't want to, um, upset your consultant because your consultant is the person that will determine whether you pr- progress or not he's the one that will put your name forward and it's all about who you know and you know the medical profession is all like that you stroke me and let me put that another way mm-hmm. you uh, pat me on the back yeah i'll give nothing. you a bed bath <laughs> 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 that's exactly how it works i'll pat you on the back and you give me a bed bath yeah hmm. Um, bed baths are not all they're cracked up to be. So is it only going to take two months to, for them to be trained up then? 
two months, it would take years. But you said we had to avoid hospital for about well, two months. Th uh, by two months, you'd think that they'd more or less get the ha got the hang of, uh, you know... Uh, Stitching you up. Yeah, or, or where the surgery is and, you know, where the car park is. You know. <laughs> they more or less got their, their head around an, an, an ordinary average day. But if you went to a hospital last Wednesday, you were screwed. There must have been thousands of deaths. The thing is, if I went into hospital... It's probably the most dangerous place. I mean, that uh, Philip had a list of the most dangerous places in the world to go on holiday. A hospital on Wednesday is probably the most dangerous place on earth. Sh Not even in uh, in Afghanistan. Yeah, but surely, if you go into hospital, shouldn't you uh, shouldn't you be told whether the doctor who is operating on you or who is looking at you? This is their first time ever. <laughs> should, should, that information should be uh, made available, shouldn't it? I only want to be seen by people of at least 60 years old peering at me over half-moon spectacles. Yes. I mean it. Yeah. I don't want anybody who's not old enough to grow a beard. Yes, yeah, that's it, a fair it point. It is funny, though, isn't it, though? We don't... Uh, even normal GPs, I think, we don't want anyone who's younger than us. But, but, and, and that option is becoming uh, less and less viable <laughs> as time <laughs> progresses, yeah. I mean, uh, policemen getting younger is one thing, but when um, uh, politicians in the cabinet seem to be uh, 16 years old, well, then you've, uh, then you know you've, well, you might as well <laughs> just uh, sit, sit yourself on an ice floe and, uh, and get uh, sent out to sea, eh, Joan? Oh, yes, Nick, absolutely. See, well, I was, was right again. I was just thinking of something else you ought to avoid medically. Go on. Avoid having a surgeon as your GP. H avoid having a surgeon as your GP. Yes. Well, you'll always want to get the knife out. They do. Right. They blooming do. Nearly had me having three operations. Well, there's something weird about wanting to be a surgeon, don't you think? At what point in your life do you make the choice that you want to cut people up for a living? Well, I know there are times I've got to say, thank goodness a surgeon could do that or oh, that. Oh, absolutely, yeah. But I'd much rather come from that other point of view, like, let's see if we can fix it any other way first. Oh, uh, yes, quite. But uh, to be a surgeon, I think, um, I think I've mentioned this uh, as, as well. This is one of the um, things that we learnt in, uh, in the course of doing what's laughably called a psychology degree. Oh. was that the, that the psychological profiles of surgeons and serial killers are almost the same with one, um, with one difference. Yeah, One's I... introvert, surgeons are introverts, and um, serial killers are extrovert. Re I, I might have thought it was the other way round. Uh, you could because... quite possibly be right. I only have um, a 2-2, two -two, yeah. which means that I don't know anything. Oh, that's all right then. Oh, thank God for that. I thought I was being stupid. Um, the other thing is that... You were talking about aeroplanes. Yeah. And you were saying probably, well, I think you're implying that probably most uh, planes are on automatic pilot. Yes. If that's so, would it be absolutely ridiculous to assume that the, the planes going into the Twin Towers were on automatic pilot? Um, that would be a very strange automatic pilot, Joan. Why? Well, it would be one that you hadn't followed the instructions as you took it out of the box. Something went terribly wrong there. No, I, d I think that was manual override. Well, was it? Because <laughs> the, the... Oh, you mean that the, you're, you're putting that down to a glitch in the system? It was actually on the autopilot, but, the auto, but it's the autopilots that are evil. Well, the thing was, you know, if it was an automatic pilot and it was supposed to be taken over by hijackers, or they were... Mm. The hijackers actually couldn't fly planes like that at all. They'd only been a very short little training course. And they did seem to be a very... I mean, the planes weren't wobbling about very much, were they? They, they no. seemed to be on a very st even and steady keel. Yeah, oh, my God, I think you've got something there, Joan. Oh, good. <laughs> no, not good. <laughs> it's bad. <laughs> and it's a very difficult target to hit, actually, a little spike sticking up in the air like that. In fact, it's, uh, it's probably... Um, part of that whole Terminator thing. You know the three Terminator films? They weren't um, uh, escapist fair, they were documentaries. Ah! The well, machines have taken that. over and they're killing us slowly. Oh, I, I, something I should see tomorrow then. Yeah. All right, thanks for the bad Thank news, you. Joan. Bye-bye. Cheers, ta-da. They're killing us softly with their song. Everybody! What's the next bit again? I can't remember. Oh. We'll uh, have a, a ponder and come right back. We, we will. will. We, we will. Will. When do we start? Tonight. Good. 
I'd like to get in, get on with it, get it over with and get out. Get it? Got it. Good. Strumming my face with your fingers. What? Huh? I always hated that song. What on earth does that mean? You sure you got those lines right? I bet I do. You could Google it. You, you could uh, bring those lyrics up in uh, b in 0 0.0125 of a second, I bet. I'm all right. It would take you a minute to type it in. But go <laughs> why they tell you how long it took uh, for, uh, for them to find the answers on Google, I've got no idea. What, what, is that a new feature? No, it's been there forever. Really? Where? Do you not Google? Yeah, but I didn't know there's a timer on it. Yeah. Where is it? Is it on the main page? Yeah, after you've searched, yeah. it'll say, took... Telling point, me point, point seconds softly. To well, find. you want to spell softly, right? Oh. Ding. <laughs> Can I have an E, please, Bob? All right. Uh, there you go. It's found it in oh. uh, zero point one four seconds. Why would anybody need to know that? Is that zero point one four or fourteen? What's the difference? <laughs> it wasn't 14, obviously, was it? No, it's <laughs> 0 0.14 seconds. Alright, okay. Go ahead, um, uh, Which one? Give us the lyrics. I don't know, any of those. Alright, let's go that one. No. Oh, <laughs> wrong you one. pick the only one on the page that's not lyrics. It's the top one as well. Stupid boy. Killing me softly. Click killing me softly. Do oh, it faster, oh, quicker, aye, quicker. Aye, aye. Strumming my pain with his fingers. Singing my life with his words. Killing me softly with his song. Uh, again, telling my whole life with his words. Hmm. Strumming my. It's not strumming my face with his fingers. <laughs> <laughs> that would be nonsensical. I feel. Uh, go up a bit. I felt all flushed with fever, embarrassed by the crowd. He felt my. Uh, he. I. Uh, he. I felt he found my letters. Yeah. And read each one aloud. Boring. Yeah. Here's Enfield. Hello, Andy. Hello. Andy. Yes. I mean, I just listened to that advert where they say, where there's a will, there's a way, when everybody knows that where there's a will, there's a deceased person. Oh, these are the jokes, folks. Uh, but, no, seriously, you were belittling your, uh, your recent sidekick, because I think sometimes you made more sense when you were with that one in the film, that uh, Costello fella. Um, the oh, Aeroplane boy, he's got no end of material, eh? You must have written this stuff down, Andy. Well, Abbott no, and no, Costello? I've... Good grief, that's the first time I've ever heard that. Yeah, well, probably not, but there we go. But, um, yeah, aeroplanes do stop at Heathrow as a stopover point where they'll drop off and pick up new passengers, pretty much like a bus stop in a, a bus stop, because at one time you would fly from either Exeter or Bristol to Heathrow and then fly on to America. Yeah, um, well, I would now, think so. It's an airport. Bristol, yeah. yeah, Bristol now flies direct. Um, and landing and takeoff is all done by the pilot. And although they've got automatic pilot, the automatic pilot will only ever do what the pilot programs it to do. Right. So the, we really need to look at the pilots. Oh, never mind. I won't go down that route. We don't. We really don't want to go back to 9/11. And shame on Joan for taking us down that route. On 90 Nick Abbott. I just want to tell you all how happy I am to be back in the studio. I know, it's a very tight edit. Well, you want in the whole thing? It's, it's almost impossible to edit that. Uh, this is what she says. I just want to tell you all how happy I am to be back in the studio, making a picture again. There's no gap between studio and making, you see. She wasn't thinking before she said it. We have a How Low auction that's running at the moment. It's uh, for a 42-inch plasma television. That's not saving the planet. Oh, we didn't say it was green. No. Here's the reason why no one... The, the, we won't actually save the planet. It will come to naught. We could go back to living like, um... Uh, Stone Age Man tomorrow and actually make a difference. Or we could change things little by little and make no difference at all. But the thing is... Everybody wants a flat-screen television. And those are the ones that, are, that suck up about ten times more energy than your... Than that thing that is the size of a Volkswagen that's sitting on your table at home now. Your chromium... What do they call it? CRT. Uh, uh, <laughs> cathode ray tube, tube is the right answer. Even if we did go back to Stone Age Man, damage yeah. is done, isn't it? Yes. So we're, s we're doomed. So you might as well go and get that plasma. Yeah. You might as well watch High Def, uh, the end of the world in High Def, baby. 
That's what I'm looking forward to. It'll be spectacular. <laughs> You're actually, actually there, there yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, this is an excellent lot. We've got a 42-inch plasma TV up for grabs in our How Low Reverse Auction Competition. It ends at 2 o'clock Sunday afternoon. It is, uh, you will uh, know by now, the lowest unique bid that wins the game. That's the lowest bid in pence that nobody else makes before the end of the auction, 2 o'clock on Sunday. Would you like me to tell you what this uh, television features? Yes, please. It's HD ready with built-in free view, giving you instant access to loads of free channels. Hey, the uh, Sopranos is coming up soon. Uh, you know, the, uh, the last, um... The last eight, nine, is it nine, Do eight, ten is episodes it? of The Sopranos. Absolutely. Is it any good? Is it any good? Yeah. It cements its position as perhaps the best thing that has ever been made for television. I'm not really into gangster-type things. Right, well, you don't really need to be. I mean, each episode of The Sopranos has always featured some sort of unpleasantness. Mm. But it's really just, um, character studies. It's a soap, I suppose. Okay. It's the classiest soap that's ever been made. Would you be hooked on it if you just watched the first episode ever? Yeah. Okay. I'll give it a go. Hey. Groovy. <laughs> Bingo. Um, anyway, uh, you'll be able to watch that on it, in it. It's got fast motion enhancing technologies. Oh, there. Very good. It provides a top-notch visual experience. Images are clearer, sharper and more vibrant. It comes with hidden speakers, a swivel stand, a glossy black finish. Um, like, uh, Lucy's dog. <laughs> <laughs> to bid, text LBC plus your bid in pence to 88821. If it was, a uh, 50p bid, you would text LBC50 to 88821. Bids cost £1.50 plus your standard network rate. Lines close 2pm, Sunday, 5th of August, 2007. Bidders must be over 16. See lbc.co.uk for full terms and conditions. Did I say it right? Yeah. Here is, um, uh, someone on the A13. Hello. 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 Hi, uh, Nick. You all right? Yeah, good. Yeah, I just want to um, tell you about uh, a strange phenomenon that I discovered. Phenomenon. Phenomenon. Yeah. Um, I frequently listen to uh, LBC when I'm driving, and um, just before I go into either the Blackwall Tunnel or the Rover Hive, um, I turn the radio off. Just yeah. I don't want to hear sort of distorted noise. Static. Um, I forgot to turn it off the other day while I was in the Rover Hive, and LBC actually carried on playing like normal. Huh. And, um, I came out the other side and I thought maybe there's something wrong with the, the radio, so I turned around at the roundabout and I came back and, uh, <laughs> it played as normal again. Right, and so you actually uh, turned around and did the tunnel again. Yep. And, uh, so then I tested it out on the Blackwall Tunnel about half an hour later. Right. And, uh, it done the same again, so, huh. uh, there you go. In, out, in, out, shake it all about. Yep. <laughs> Groovy, baby. Do we have any information about why that might be? I've absolutely no idea. I've tried other radio stations on uh, FM, but none of the others seem to work. Good, I'm other glad than, to hear it. Well, with the exception of one, but I won't say the name. No. No, but yeah, there you go. Was it hard? <laughs> no, it wasn't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, well, that's excellent. Thanks a lot, H. Cool, no worries. Cheers. Uh, cheers, mate. Ta-da. Uh, is, uh, is that a phenomenon that we're aware of? Mr. Engineer Man? Other people have called saying that that is the case, yes. Oh, really? But did we engineer it to be like that, or have, uh, is it a strange phenomenon? Uh, I'm, I'm, I remember someone ringing up before and I'm pretty sure they said they had, like, repeater transmitter in the tunnel itself, so you could still listen to your radio. Oh, yeah. But that, it doesn't make sense that it wouldn't work with any other stations. I don't think it was just us that had that facility, because he said it didn't work with other stations, didn't he, just then? Just the one. He said yeah, there was one the, other. Uh, yeah. Hmm. We're the special one, though. Yeah, as an as an Jose, we are the special ones. <laughs> we should form a little club. Uh, Romford, hello, Anne. Oh, Anne. Yeah. You seem surprised. Hello. Hello, Anne. Yeah, I'm ringing about the music that is played when when uh, people are talking. When the music's played. Yeah. It's ridiculous. What music? The, the start of the program. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's so rude. If you was talking to somebody, how would you like them to put a record on? Sorry, what? Yeah, that music that you're playing there. You're getting fainter. Oh, 
خوش دارن Nice lady. I couldn't hear a word she was saying over that oh, awful music. I wish she'd speak up. Good grief. How rude. I think she had a good point as well to say. Well, never know. Oh, well. Liberace strikes again. <laughs> with his fat little fingers playing over the uh, keys. Even after death, he's still irritating. Did he have extra wide keys on his piano? Because <laughs> all that jewellery and big well, fat that's, fingers. Well, that's offensive. Oh, it isn't? It's just a question. <laughs> You take things one step too far, Alex. Yeah. See the line, Thank Alex? You. you crossed it. <laughs> Somebody's <laughs> got to cross that line. Yeah. And there was a look of worry behind your eyes for a moment there. You thought, oh no, I've, I've <laughs> actually have made, have made an <laughs> error. <I> finally. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hey, guess what they're going to have on TV soon? Oh, you'll never, uh, if, if I gave you a month of Sundays, you wouldn't guess. Is it Celebrity Baby Dancing on Eyes? Almost. Ten Jim Slip mums will live together in a big brava-style house in a controversial new show. Oh, no. <laughs> new? Pram Face Mansion, it's called. Oh, that's quite clever. No, it's not. It's awful. <laughs> I was just being polite. It's gonna follow young single mothers as they try to help each other look after their tots. No, they won't. They'll be shouting and screaming at each other. I wanna watch Trisha. No, I wanna watch Jeremy Kyle. Be like that. <laughs> well, I can't shut me bye bye up. Jamie Carl wins every time, though, surely. Oh, shut up. <laughs> Why Wait. would you say that? Well, have you not watched it? I've. Uh, well, to, to find watch, I've seen it as I uh, lunge for the remote to turn the channel. Have you sat through a whole episode? Why would anybody do that? I have enough misery in my life without wallowing in other people's. Because it's funny to watch. Will you stop sticking up for it? Oh no, it, it's like it, that. It's really, it's really funny to watch, and but it's not funny. It's, it's uh, like the Sex Pistols said. It's a cheap holiday in other people's misery. Rock and roll. Yeah, but I always feel better for watching it. Well, that's dreadful. <laughs> that's that an awful you, admission. Doesn't it just make you feel really disappointed about this country, about the human race? Yeah. Uh, don't you feel that it's actually shocking that those people are wandering around? Reproducing, yeah, as, as well as voting. Not in my town. <laughs> Not in your town. <laughs> 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 they don't reproduce in your town. Well, they ha they have to fill out a, a questionnaire and get above, like a ride on Disneyland, where you have to be at least this high to go on the go on a ride. In your town, you have to be at least this smart to pass on your genes. Yeah, but when you're watching it, you're not you're not watching it. You're thinking, oh, look at the state of the country. You're just watching it just because it's on and it, you know, there's t people arguing and, you know, not getting hideous. on. that's hideous. Not getting on. It's if I want to see, um, Oik's arguing, I'll go to the bus stop. It's like a real life EastEnders. Yeah, there's enough of it going on outside your window. Yes. And having to turn your TV on and I see know. more of it. Oh, yeah, but. People dragging dogs around on a string. <laughs> drinking yep. a can of Stella and shouting at each other. Yeah. Like yep. that they go. Yeah, but you can watch it in widescreen. Or high def. In high definition, yeah. yeah. Wouldn't that be awful in high definition? Because <laughs> see every pore and and a, a self-inflicted tattoo mark. Mm -hmm. I'm just. Uh, it is a bit of an eye opener, really, because we, we you know wander around in our own cosy little lives, and we uh, uh, know people who are like us. Yeah. You know, everybody. Uh, everybody sort of. Um, has their own little bubble that they go around in, and you assume that everyone is like that because they're really the only people that you see, and the only um, time that, that you're brought up short is when you do a job that um, horror of horrors brings you in contact with the general public. Yeah, and um, a job like this, for instance, talking to uh, uh, members of the general public on the phone or in a, a call centre, or uh, if you're in a complaints department in a shop. Yeah. So you you don't really get to meet the great unwashed. Yeah, so you want a better term. So you turn on Jeremy Kyle. And there they all are. Yeah. But um smelling what? sweetly. They're not smelling sweet. But the thing it, what amazes me is that you you you, you watch it and there are these couples that are, uh, you know yelling in each other's faces and they can't agree on anything. But the one thing that they can agree on is that yeah, we we need to go on Jeremy Kyle to sort our problems out. Amazing. 
That's the only thing that they can you agree on. Be what, what point do you, you know? Do you turn to your partner and go, "Yeah, we we need Jeremy to sort this out." I this is going to wave the money in front of them. Yeah, yeah. This is going to be the pressure. next. This is going to be the next um, because uh, television is busy um, uh, eating itself out from the inside. Um, they're falling on their swords because uh, we better get into this after the, uh, the the travel, right? Because we're past a break. But remind me where we are as we come back. Put a bookmark. Uh, in this, on this page, okay, in this page of the script, as it was, you know, typed up and agreed beforehand. What page are we on again? <laughs> no idea. Uh, does this, does this sound like this was planned? It's 9.16. Yeah. Travel now with Alan Joyce. Thanks, Nick. The, uh, M1 still easing. Words, more words. Yeah, um, yeah, so TV people are falling on their sword. They're, um, eviscerating themselves because... One television company uh, tried to uh, portray the Queen as a dope, as um, an, an irritable old bag. Mm. Instead of, then uh, they showed her uh, apparently storming out of a room, whereas in reality she stormed into the room <laughs> in a huff. The huff was the same, it's just the direction in which she was travelling, they lied to us about that. So what? I mean, the, what's the difference? There is no difference. It's the same. She was going east rather and, than west. Yeah, exactly. And so, and she was the only person in the whole wide world who, which, who could have prompted this, um, th this wailing and gnashing of teeth from the television industry because they misrepresent the truth all the time. I mean, that's just the nature of television. Actual reality is too... If you look out your window, that's actual reality. Mm. Not that interesting. And so you have to jimmy it up in, uh, you know, in some way. And like I've mentioned before, you know, the, all the nature programs, they put on the sound effects. Those aren't the actual animals making a noise. Uh, you know, you can't hear the caterpillar chewing. That's some bloke in a sound effects studio, you know, having a munch of uh, celery stick. Because <laughs> <laughs> caterpillars don't make that noise, do they? But they always, you know, they, they, so they put on like, all that stuff afterwards. Uh, because in the cacophony of a jungle, you can't uh, to take out one little sound. Or if the shot's being done from a helicopter, well, a helicopter is the loudest thing in the whole wide world. And uh, you can't um, hear, you know, a, a, a lion chomping on a bone hmm. from a helicopter. You just can't. So they put all that stuff on afterwards. Or reality shows, they're all uh, chopped up to make the story that the, um, the producer has in his mind about who's, who's the good person, who's the bad one, and, you know, whether uh, who, who really loves somebody else, you know, all that rubbish. It's just to make re uh, actual reality seem more interesting. And I wonder... What, what uh, uh, after what period of time? Because uh, everybody seems to be uh, uh, mere culpa-ing, uh, like it's going out of fashion. They're all putting their hands up, and uh, I'm Spartacus, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, at what point are we going to get the shocking revelation that the that those confessional shows are uh, by and large all made up? Mm. If they are, right? Because I would suspect that a lot of the people that go on there aren't actually because this happened in America that a lot of the people that went on those shows aren't actually who they say they are at all. They're just actors who are paid to... or just members of the public who have said, right, okay, today you'll be playing, you know, some guy who lives in a box yeah. and um, uh, has had uh, children uh, by inseminating himself. Yeah. Or, or whatever bizarre <laughs> story they've come up with that day. Uh, you know, and um, a woman's pregnant, and the question is, is it hers? Sure. Let's take a blood test. You know, all that rubbish. So, uh, that is bound to come, isn't it? thing is, I thought, you know, most people are on the understanding that, you know, TV, uh, whatever programme they're watching, uh, is kind of, is kind of faked in a way. And yeah. You know, why it's all fake. Is it the is it's it, television? Is, is it the people that are getting angry, or is it just the media and the watchdogs that? Are I really don't think that people could care less. I mean, they might be a bit annoyed that they get ripped off, mm. but they but they don't mind that it's not real, real as long as it's interesting. Pe yeah, people know that. You know, people have all watched like the bloopers shows and stuff like that. Yeah. So they have an understanding that you know people they'll you know they'll film it until they get it right. Or and the news do it too. I mean uh, the recent floods. Every single news bulletin was of somebody who uh, was the um, the reporter standing up to his knees in water, hmm. while in the background or behind the camera usually locals will be watching this happening on dry land, but five yards away. So it's completely unnecessary. They were just over egging the uh, the pudding. 
uh, it, or, or essentially lying to us. It isn't all underwater, just that little bit that was on the camera is, and, uh, and here's our reporter, um, who is uh, moist for your enjoyment, <laughs> but it's actually, um... That's what we want to see, isn't it? Well, yes, we, we it's want, men... We don't want to see him standing on the dry land. We well, I, I found it to be quite silly after a while. I mean, okay, I know what water is. Sure. Um, just stand on dry land, because he was standing on dry land for the, for, uh, you know, 30 seconds before the cameras went on. And, uh, uh, and just to the point at which he was on air, they said, okay, get in the water then. But the thing is, that got to a point uh, that it just got a bit repetitive. In the beginning, you know, you want to see the worst bit of the flooding, don't you? You don't want to just see someone on dry land. You want to see the worst bit of the flooding. But just because they didn't have any original ideas of how to present the story... <laughs> you can't justify why, why, it. Why, why couldn't they present it from underneath the water? I knew you were going to say that. You, yeah. you can't justify the, the, the story in the first place, then what's the point of having the report? So they've got a no matter how repetitive it is, even if it's on the 20th day of not the same thing having mm. happened, yeah. they can't suddenly switch to standing on the pavement at also, all if they're reporting on the flood. Yeah. Also, they're, they're just, it's just the point that the, the news media, the television news media, will choose the stories, not on, dependent on how important the story is, because, you know, the most important stories will be things that people really aren't interested in. It'll be... Um, climate change, which you can raise a flicker of interest for, but when it actually comes down to changing your way of life, then we'd, we'd opt out. No thanks. We, uh, you know, we want somebody else to, to fix it for us. And, and, and yeah, essentially, it's all of our doing, but we don't want to change. We don't want to go without fridges. We don't want to go without cars. We don't want to go without plasma TVs. We hate those new uh, fangled bulbs and all of that stuff. Uh, so that's not uh, going to change, but uh, and so, and so the, you know, and then, then the next story will be Darfur and all of these things. You know? Yeah, nobody wants to hear that. They just want to see um, television news with exciting pictures. So it's almost irrelevant the importance of the story. It's the excitement of the visual uh, element that goes along with it, which is mendacity as well. Mendacity. I have to look that word up. I watched that whole film, you know, where Cat in a Hot Tin Roof, yeah. where Big Daddy would stomp about saying, Mendacity! <laughs> and, I, and I thought, God, a, what a great word. What on earth does that mean? He just kept saying it over and over and over again. It means lying. And also in TV news, uh, I, I know this because I, I, I did some uh, brief uh, work for a TV news station, and... Um, you know, often the pictures that you're seeing, if it's not a live report, it's it's library footage. Yes. And, you know, so it, it's stuff, you know, they haven't gone out that morning to, to no. film. It's stuff from, like, years ago. Yes, they're lying to you again. Mm. But it's true what you say about, like, the news, even the news has to entertain now. Mm. And if you look at American news, it's like you said, the the top stories won't necessarily be the most important no. ones, they'll just be the most entertaining or exciting pictures. Yes. Recent deaths in your area, and because then, people will stay tuned to see if there's anyone they know. Yeah, <laughs> and the, the real stuff, the most important ones, will be buried down the bottom well, they just, just before be the weather or something. Yeah, they won't, won't be recorded at all. For seconds. Exactly. Well, they don't do, they don't do actual news there anymore. It's, no. um, it, much of it's just opinion and joshing. And you know what? We can be as superior as we like, and there's nothing uh, that we like more than uh, pretending to be superior than Americans. But everything that happens there also happens here. It used to be ten years later, but uh, the um, transference of information has got ever faster. Now it's almost uh, from one day to the next. And we have no end of joshing, giggling news people in this country now. It's become... As you say, Alex, uh, another branch of the entertainment business. Well, that's why we have uh, young, attractive ladies presenting it with uh, wrinkly old men. Yeah, which is just mystifying to me. <laughs> <'cause> <laughs> I don't <care. laughs> Exactly. Yeah. Oh, if yeah. it were the other way around, everybody, would go, oh well, it's a toy boy, uh, as though that makes any sense at all. They have, uh, and <laughs> I've mentioned her before, but every time I see her, I just can't believe what I'm looking at. They have a new news reader on the BBC. I swear she used to be on Blue Peter. Or, or some sort of children's program like that. She looks like a cat. She's got the biggest, weirdest eyes I've ever seen on a human being. And she kind of squeaks as well. And how anyone could take her seriously as a, as a newsreader, I, I've got... She may be the world's most intelligent woman, but you just can't pay attention to anything she says because she just looks so strange and she sounds like, um... 
<laughs> a thing that squeaks a lot. Does she? <laughs> I can't think of any that squeaks. Does what she, squeaks? A uh, mouse? Like a, yeah. No, they, they don't Like squeak. an unoiled door. But, does she sometimes present the BBC Breakfast programme? I haven't well? seen her on that, no. Oh. I'm sure she'll pop up at some time. They all have to do their stint on that, don't they? Do they? Getting up at four o'clock in the morning. Yeah. That is a nightmare. Yeah, but then you like finished. for a year. You finished at nine, aren't you? Yeah, uh, in in every respect of the word, finished. Yeah, <laughs> like dead on your feet. Yeah. Anyway, this is this thing that I was uh, mentioning: ten gym slip mums will live together in a big brother style house. This is uh, another indication that they really have run completely out of ideas in television, and it's like a dog chasing its own tail. They'll just mix and match whatever's gone before to uh, pretend that it's a new program. So we got the big brother house. And then we've got young mothers, presumably who will all be teenagers, and stupid, I would guess, because why else would they go on this show? So can we vote them out? Almost certainly. Um, uh, the TV boss responsible said the show was a social experience to find alternatives to the nuclear family. No, it's not. You're sticking them all in a house so they can scream and shout at each other for our amusement. And do you know which organisation is putting this on? Channel 5? No. Living TV? No. Bravo? No. The BBC! Inside track property education. Oh, I uh, didn't have the fader up. It would have said... I really like you. Do you like me? Shame we didn't hear that. What's that one from? Uh, that's Larry Sanders. Oh, okay. He takes a uh, Russian supermodel to dinner, a uh, little realising what a fiery temperament she has. <laughs> Ending in disaster, then. As usual, yes. And hilarity all round. Derbyshire, hello, Alan. Hi, Nick. How are you doing? Good, thanks. Uh, I understand you've been on, on about junior doctors this evening. Yes. Uh, um, well, I understand a few years ago you had, uh, did, you had an eye problem. Did you actually go to the NHS, or was it privately done? An eye problem? Yeah, many years ago now, I believe, wasn't it? You had a problem with your eye? Mm, no. I think it was. I had... <laughs> <laughs> well, are you checking my notes? <laughs> I had I had uh, laser surgery, if that's what that you mean. That was it, yes. <laughs> right. Well, that wasn't a problem so much. I mean, well, not being well, able to see very well. Was it privately done, or... Yes. So, the, so the, well, we see... Well, I don't think they. Oh. I don't think they do that on the NHS, do they? Laser surgery. Well, it depends who you know. <laughs> I don't think it does. Oh right. Um, well, I thought in some cases they might actually. Why would they do that? Well, sort of people with sort of uh, really bad eyes. Anyway, I thought you had to go through the NHS to do it. No, I went well, to see the uh, the people at Moorfields, um, and it seemed like a production line in there. They didn't really t talk to you like a human being. You were a number. I am not a number. I am a. Free man? Yeah, I'm a private, um, private patient, I was, after that. I thought, no, no, I, I want somebody who can actually, you know, talk to me rather than next. You know, yeah. You... Well, sort of, myself, I sort of, I'm very tempted to go in private myself because, um, about a year ago now, I started getting pains in my thighs. And, um, a year later, they've, uh, they, they gave me an MRI scan, and it took them ten weeks to get the results back to me, when they said it'd take uh, two weeks. MRS scan, that's the one where they lie you on a bed and put you in a giant machine that goes bang, right? That's the very one, yes. Thank God, what do you call it, did it before I spoke to you. I you have to take all of, uh, all of your metal off, because it's a giant magnet, right? And yeah. it just goes bang, 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 bang. What it's doing, I've got no idea. It's well, the machine that goes bang. Mm. But anyway, sort of, um, I, I wouldn't criticise doctors if I was you, because I believe on some people's notes they write awkward patients. I'm sure that they have that on mine, yeah, in, in giant capital letters. You, Nick, awkward? I don't think so. Anyway, <laughs> have a pleasant evening. Thank you, mate. Bye. Uh, hey, the, um, the mayor's got a new car. Are you aware of that? Oh, isn't it a big flashy thing? Not our mayor, mind. Hey, there's a new uh, there's a new name in the race for the mayor of London. It's um, Brian Paddock. We've got Brian Paddock, Boris Johnson, Ken Livingstone. That's uh, that's not a list to get the heart racing, really, is it? Isn't Gary Bushell doing it as well? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he's. He... Yeah. Oh, Gary is he, Bushell. Has he dropped out? I didn't know he was still uh, alive. There's there's a name I haven't heard since the 1970s. I'm. Sh yeah, he was. Uh, I'm sure he announced that he was going to run for mayor. Yeah, that'll work. Oh well. Brian Paddock, Boris Johnson, Ken Livingstone. Hmm. What what name jumps out at you there? Um. 
in what respect? Which which do I like? Yeah, well, Boris Johnson's the most likable because he's like a teddy bear, isn't he? Hmm. I think he would be the most amusing dinner partner. Is, uh, is that how you vote for your mayor? I think that, I think everybody votes for their politicians, depending on whether they like them or not, rega uh, and not really on the policies that they're espousing, because everybody says the same thing. So, oh, well, vote for me, and I'll uh, sort out uh, education. I'll sort out the roads. We'll get us out of um, war zones, and everything will be super fantastic. All you have to do is vote for me. They all say that. Well, that's the thing. You kind of got to pick the person who you're happy to have, you know, on your TV for the next five, six years, you know? Right. Because well, that would be Boris Johnson, then. Yeah. I mean, if there was a programme on uh, featuring... If there were three programmes featuring each of those three uh, gentlemen, Boris Johnson would get the ratings because uh, he would be the funniest. Yeah, of course. Well, there you are. There's the answer. I mean, uh, Ken Livingstone, uh, whatever qualities he might have, he ain't no comedian, is he? Mm. <laughs> I mean, if... If it was a stand-up, then you would, uh, that would be at the point at which you went to the bar, right? There should be some more, more comedians, uh, entering the race to be mayor. <laughs> no, there yeah, shouldn't. Well, that's, that's, you know, that's obviously what we, uh, we vote for, isn't it? Who's the, who's the lov most lovable, who's the funniest, yes, the, who's... the most likeable, exactly. That's how we vote now. The, uh, the Americanization of British politics is complete. It's all about how you look on television. It doesn't have anything to do with uh, with what your policies are, which is why um, Tony Blair was so very successful because he was our version of Ronald Reagan. He was the great communicator. Mm -hmm. We believed everything that he said because he said it with a smile and he seemed like a nice chap and a pretty straight kind of guy and all of that. Which is why um, our uh, the current incumbent <laughs> might have a bit of a problem in that respect. Is it? Uh, the brown bounce notwithstanding. I've hardly seen anything of him, though. What? Yeah, but you don't read papers or watch television. But he hasn't really been on TV. He's, he's been, in, you know, in the US, hasn't he, all this time, oh, for the last couple of weeks? It's he probably the, um, he probably is surrounded by, uh, like, a, 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 like, almost like a mosquito cloud of, uh, stylists and advisors telling him to do this, don't do that, and... I don't know whether he's just completely ignored them, because he doesn't seem to have... Does he still chew his nails? Um... Because that's really upsetting when you see the state of his hands. Probably not in public, but... <laughs> well, he does do it. He chews his nails and picks his nose in public. The, uh, the, the film of him doing that on uh, YouTube, YouTube, is... Uh, the, the amount of people who've seen that is uh, enormous. But that does, doesn't that make him more lovable because no, he's human? No, I go... T no. <laughs> <laughs> that's a human act of... You know, that's a human act. Well, there's lots of human acts that don't make you lovable that we need to uh, get through on a daily basis. But, I, uh, I bet you Boris could uh, get away with doing that, though. What, chewing his nails and picking his nose? Yeah. Well, listen, everybody chews their nails and picks their nose at one point. It's always best to pick your nose before you chew your nails, by the way. In much the same way as it's always best to, um, <laughs> pillage before you burn. Of course. Let's have, uh, Catford. Hello, Trixie. Hi there. Trixie. Super. Good. Now then, Nick, as a recovering vegetarian... Yeah. ...yourself, um, how does one best cook broccoli or cauliflower? Cauliflower... Steam them. Steam them. Yeah. Right. Apparently you're supposed to eat broccoli and cauliflower all the time. Yes, I know, I know. This um, week, have you noticed there's been an absolute blizzard of, um, uh, of misquoted medical studies saying oh that you just do this, don't do that, and uh, you'll die if you do the other. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, well, what, what does one do? You just... I, you yeah, ignore them all and just do whatever feels good. Yes. If it feels good, do it. Thank you. I shall do that. I shall remember that. Thank you for the music this week. I have been listening to it. Thank it you for the music. Good. So the I've been doing it. Oh. <laughs> oh, not oh. the music here, the music at another place. That's what you mean, right? Oh, at the other place. Yeah, yeah. Yes, at the other because place. Because people will be confused. Music, they're thinking. Music, yes. Oh, sorry, yes. At the other place, yes. Yeah. It's, been, it's, been, it's been nice, so I've enjoyed this last week. Well, um, I, I will only have done, what? Uh, every day. S seven hours on the air today. I, I should be, um, uh, if, if the hospitals were being, um, better run, and if all the junior doctors hadn't started, uh, on one day in the middle of this week, I would be, uh, I'd be hospitalised by Absolutely. ten o'clock. and, yeah. and tomorrow you're going to, you're going to be doing the same uh, thing. same thing again, Absolutely. yeah, I'll struggle through. What a brave soldier I am. You were a very brave soldier, just, to, you know, it's the broccoli you've got to keep eating, or the cauliflower. Yeah. So, steaming it. 
For how long? Please tell me, because I, I, I don't eat enough of it. I until mean, I it's... I the prostate. Oh, God. <laughs> until it's, um, uh, al dente. You remember al dente, al dente don't you? Yes. It, which, is it, is it better to eat it al dente? I mean, what, what, um, prevents the, how would, how should I say, the fartaciousness? The what? Well, I like to say fartaciousness. It sounds uh, much nicer. Oh, that. Yes, it's, it, it sounds better than the uh, the four lesser version of it. Right. Uh, you have uh, put a fork in it and um... mash it and get no, it. No, 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 no. <laughs> as soon as the uh, the fork meets um, less resistance, it's done. Don't overcook it. So, will that? Will seriously? Will that get get rid of its gash, uh, gaseous? I think you just have to chew properly. Okay. Okay. Chew until it's soft. And what would happen if everybody in the studio now ate broccoli and cauliflower? Uh, well, by the time the effects uh, t took place, I'd be uh, in a car heading home. <laughs> so they can go ahead with their bad selves. Oh, that's good. That's good. Now, that's why I wanted to get the subject out today, not tomorrow, because obviously Lucy will be there, and we, we yeah. would hate to mention that, that subject in front of her. She would disapprove. She would certainly disapprove. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Oh, uh, by the way... um. Who was saying they didn't like a cat or didn't like cats? Was it, oh, uh, Agent Chris? I don't think he said that, did you? Yeah, he said he didn't oh, like yeah, you were moaning and yeah. whining and complaining. Stop whining! About I, cats. I wasn't whining, I mm -hmm. just. It sounded it, like it. Not yeah. a fan of them. Moaning. Not a fan of them. Moaning. No, uh, all right. They are very sweet, honestly. I've got yeah, a very cute one. I promise. They're gorgeous. Yeah, and, but. They, and you'd need a lot of them to kill you. But, Dogs, on the other hand. But they're vicious and they, they just fight. Like oh, cats. no, they don't. And they don't yap. You don't get a cat yapping. <laughs> no, you don't. How many cats have you got, Trixie? Um, just, just one. I'm, I'm oh, okay. glad, actually. She does yowl <laughs> in the early not, morning, you're waiting not mad, food. Yeah. But that's different. But the thing is, cats make sudden movements that make me jump. <laughs> You know, a, some, a, a bang will go off or something like that that will, will scare the cat and they'll just, you know, fling across the room and that'll scare the life out of me. And I don't like that. The, the, the only time I'm, I'm, I, I was really rather cross with her was when I was trying to pop her into her basket and uh, she, she, she clung on to my, my um, front part, my breast. With, uh, with one claw, and she was hanging off by one claw, so that kind of hurt. Yeah, but well... She was scared, but that was, that was, that was a one-off, so... Um, Why were you putting it in its basket? Yes, I had to, to take it to the vet. Oh, that kind of basket. That oh, well, she basket. knew then, didn't she? Not yes. an open basket, a basket with a cage. Absolutely. A door. But I've got I've got it all planned to a T now. She 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 doesn't uh, know it's going to happen half the time. You know, it just sort of sneak poof. up on her but behind. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. So can we put requests in for this other place? No. Oh, all right. Then. What's your request? Oh, um, I I, I <sighs> epitaph. King, Crim Pim King Crimson. Rock and roll. <laughs> Definitely not. No. Oh, I'll right. play in the court of the Crimson King. Oh, all right then. There. Yeah. <laughs> Another satisfied customer. Hey, the okay. best of luck with your mastication. You. I hope Bye. it goes well. All right. Here is uh, Chingford. Hello, Raj. 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 Yeah, call me. What you can call me Susan if you like, mate. Uh, just as long me. as I call you. Yeah. Hi there. How you doing? All right. Excellent. You're talking about TV shows. Yes. Uh, well, we're actually uh, well, me and a kind of a friend of mine have uh, come up with an idea, and uh, it's it's. I'm not going to tell you, obviously. Uh, uh, what the what the business is, but it's it's about an Asian-run business by um, Pakistanis and Indians, and the boss is kind of a guy that's literally just kind of come over to take it over because his brother's died. Um, and I'm I'm just thinking, I mean, what do you think? I mean, do you think that would go in this today's day and age? I mean, how, how do you think that would something like that would do? Just kind of making a, I mean, I'm I mean, we're Pakistani ourselves, you know, They're making a mockery of ourselves. I mean, I mean, how do you think that would go? That's an impossible question for me to ask. I mean, would the UN need to uh, intervene? Is it going to be funny? I've got no idea. No, you don't. I mean, how would you feel if we kind of sent sent a CD across to you? I mean, would you be kind of prepared to listen to it? And, you know, see if it can, you know, a radio show could come of it. Or, yeah, or absolutely sort of. not. No. <laughs> okay. Not to me personally. I have no power of any kind whatsoever. Right. Okay. Um, well, I mean. Yeah, you're right. There aren't many original ideas floating around. I haven't seen anything good since The Office, to be honest. Um, well, no, no good comedies, um, but, you know, so we thought, why not? Let's come up with something of our own. Well, as long as you can string uh, 12 episodes together, it uh, almost, uh, by definition, makes you a comic genius. <laughs> apparently. 
right. well, the best of luck with it. Uh, all right. OK, cheers, mate. OK, ta-ta. Uh, this is LBC. <laughs> Travel Now with Alan Joyce. Thanks, Nick, and we're still looking at it. Anybody care what this guy thinks? No! Hey, I've played that one already. Oh, no. I thought you were going to say something. There was a deep breath in and then nothing came out. Oh, yeah, I was it's going to, but then it's just... Oh, my head's empty. Oh, yeah, well, join the, uh, join the club. Here's Croydon. Hello, John. Not quite there. Um, you're right about Gary Bushell. He is going to be a candidate for the Mayor of London for the English Democrats Party. Right, who are they? It's the, um, they sort of like English people who like England and who don't necessarily, um, have great enthusiasm for keeping the union with Scotland. Right. Buriadol. That, that means deliberately in Welsh. No one cares. I thought you might not. Thanks, mate. cock a doodle don't. Hey, um, we haven't heard any Welsh from you yet. In fact, we haven't heard any French from you either. Where's this thing that I was, um, reading out earlier on? You are a disgrace. Um, are you aware of this? Alex has volunteered to do the French bits. Really? What? Well done, Alex. I forgot to tell you, Alex. Thanks. If only I could find the, um... Uh, don't, don't worry if you can't find it. I mean, you know, there's, <laughs> it doesn't matter. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, the girl <laughs> got her foot stuck in the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> that was a genuine story as well. One moment, please. Oh, no. I, I can um, I can ask you, I, I can ask one question in Welsh. Go on, then. Hey, do you know the long, the long place name, Clan Byr... I'm aware of it, but I don't know Lair how to say it. Blair Oitin View. I've never What's been it? so offended in all my life. <laughs> what does that mean? Where do you live? Where do I live? Yeah. I'm glad you asked. Um, this is uh, a story that I did uh, a little while ago. Adults remember an average of only seven words from the languages they studied at school. Uh, a, a survey, frighteningly enough, conducted by the BBC, uh, for a new celebrity quiz called Schools Out. Oh, which sounds like, are you smarter than your seven-year-olds? Which is a hit in America, which I think they bought in uh, this country, and uh, uh, ITV probably bought it. That's just a guess. And if ITV bought a show about adults, um, competing with children on a quiz show, then the BBC would almost, because no one's got any ideas anymore, almost certainly have said, right, we'll, do, we'll copy that, we'll just call it something else. And we'll make it celebrities. <laughs> Seven words from their schoolboy and schoolgirl French. I find that hard to believe. Oh, well. I mean, you can get by, surely, much more than seven. I, I've always found it amazing how much comes back. And I wasn't paying attention at all. But this is a survey, right? Yeah. You know, people are being put on the spot there. It's not coming to them naturally. Exactly. You know, if you're put on the spot, you know, it's just like being in the classroom yeah. again. It's mendacity, is that what you're saying? Yeah. Here's, uh, Rickman's, but I'm going to test you momentarily. All right. Uh... Your moment in the spotlight has not, um, uh, it, it has the, the chance of you being in the spotlight and being embarrassed horribly before ten o'clock has not diminished. Take your time with the next call, okay? Rickmansworth. Hello, uh, Janice. Hi, Nick. Janice. Hi, talking about cats. Yes. I haven't got one, but I'm feeding my neighbour's cat at the moment. They're oh, on yeah. holiday, going Meow. in and out and what have you. Meow. Being Nicholas. kind to it, and it was yeah. purring and all lovely. Aww. And the next minute, it hissed and leapt at me and bit me. Well, quite right, too. <laughs> and well, I was being so nice to it, because I felt sorry for it being on its own. Some cats are a bit... Well, what's the word? Mental. Mm. In that you'll stroke them and stroke them and stroke them, and it'll be lovely, 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 and then all a little switch will go off in its mind and think, right, I've had enough of that. And it could just, you know, jump to the floor and walk away. But some cats, they just turn around and they strike as though. Yeah, like a snake. Yeah, as though you're supposed to know when it's had enough. Well, no, I wasn't stroking it at the time. I was walking across the patio with its food and water in my hands, huh. and I actually didn't drop the bowls. I was so surprised. I put the bowls down and saw blood running down down the leg. Well, it leapt at your leg? Yeah. <laughs> I got four big tooth holes in my leg. Well, that's pretty funny. Mm, well, it wasn't at the time, <laughs> but it is now. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe you should just walk slowly. Well, I was. You were making sudden moves, Janice. No, I wasn't. Perhaps it wasn't the, um, the kind of food it likes. Well, it was. It's what the lady told me to give it. Right. 
Well, was it was it late, perhaps? No, no, <laughs> maybe half an hour or so. Well, there you go. If somebody was late with your, if you went to a restaurant and you ordered dinner and it came half an hour later, you'd probably bite well, no, four holes in the in the waiter's legs. The bowl wasn't empty, so it wasn't hungry. Right. Well, cats, they even if you just take it away and put the same food back in again, they, they're after a while they're just like, mm, it's old. I'm not interested in that. No, anymore. I did put I tipped it out and put fresh in. Well, Janice, I'm sorry, but the uh, the the the, the uh, evidence is in, and you must have been doing something I wrong. Wasn't. <laughs> All I can think of is maybe it could smell my dog. Oh, I've right. got a dog. Maybe. Uh, what anyway. kind of cat is it? Uh, pardon. What kind of cat is it? It's a lovely. It's a lo I thought it was a lovely cat. It's black and got a little white bib and little white on its little feet. Oh, and its little feet. Yeah. Is it one of those hairy cats that just seems to yeah. molt and where yeah, you can't imagine where the hair is coming from anymore? Normal, short hair. You could yeah, stuff pillows normal. with all that hair. Huh. Mm. Well, I have no, um, I can't help in any way, Janice. I've got another four days and every time I go in I'm expecting <laughs> it to leap on me. <laughs> yes. Well, uh, it's probably done that in order to make you frightened right at the yeah. outset well, in case you succeeded. forget it's dinner time. It succeeded. Yeah, good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks a lot, Janice. I'm wearing my Wellingtons now when uh, I go round. Yeah, always, yeah. <laughs> buy a suit of armour. <laughs> right, cheers. Good luck. OK, thank you. Bye. Here is Chingford. Hello, Dave. Hello, Nanny. Um, Dave. There's a good way to get back at a cat anyway. You know those little laser pointers that you get on Kiwing? Yes. The little buttons, the mm. little red light? Mm -hmm. If you fire one of those onto the floor, the cat tries to grab it. And if you just leave it static, it will, it will just stare at it. Then you move it very quickly and it tries to claw it. And then you move it around the house, and it just chases it. And if you do it round and round in circles for about thirty seconds, it normally sorts the cat out because it cannot. <laughs> it, it can't. I even go. I used to go around my friend. I had a they had a cat around there, and it always used to claw my leg. And you can actually run it around the house, and then up to the open window, and it will dive out the window into the garden, thinking it's a ball or something. But it's a uh, it's a good way of confusing it. And if you do it long enough, you actually get the cat to pass out. But I don't recommend that to. Sort of. Well, I can remember p spending hours um, in uh, convulsed with hilarity because the same thing works when you catch a sun ray off your watch, yeah. and it'll just put a little pin point of light on the wall, yeah. and a cat will be on its hind legs scrabbling away at the wall, and you may <laughs> and you can walk the cat all hours. the way up hours the wall and back crazy. down again. I know. It's, it's, yeah. I, I mean, that's what they're for, cats. <laughs> yeah, for our amusement. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, the reason I called was for some strange reason. Now, you know, you, you retain these things in your mind for no reason. You try and remember something and it's difficult, but for some reason you can never forget something. Yeah. The long place name in Wales. Right. That you were talking about. And before you say it, or yep. you attempt to say it, how on earth do you remember that? <laughs> Is there a mnemonic device? Uh, well, no, there wasn't. I saw it, um, and, it and I saw it, and uh, I went to Wales once. Um, and I think it was shut. But the um, the thing is, there was this sign, and I said to my mate, you know, what, what's that? what do I you say that? And this guy said it in this in this station. And it doesn't sound like it looks no. on the on the railway sign. But it was a phonetic version of it, and it is absolutely real. Because I know the end of it, right? And I know the beginning of it. It's the uh, bit in the middle that's the problem. <laughs> It is, a, it is actually, and this is like 15 years ago, so it, it might need a little bit of a tweak up. But it is, Lanfair Pilgrim Gilgog Gary Wind Dwob William Silio Go Go Go. See, Welsh people are holding their head in their hands, they can't believe it, it's the worst swear words that have ever been broadcast on the radio. I probably it sounded said, close. I, yeah, I probably said I'm licensed prostitute number 69 in Swansea. Yeah. Yeah, something well, like that. But congratulations. Yeah. You, you made it. Whoa, there you go. Everyone's it's, thrilled. It's a job and someone's got to do it. Exactly, but, um, yeah. I'll never be able to go back to Wales again, which, uh, never mind. I wouldn't think so, no. <laughs> All right, well, thanks for the effort, Dave. Okay. Cheers, mate. Ta-da. Thank you, by the way. Thank yeah. you. This is LBC. Are you a healthy or a 